television network. It's the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Today's matchup features the Temple Owls taking on the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Very un-November type of day here at Rutgers Stadium. Hot and sunny. Along with Dave Jennings, I'm Dave Sims. Good to have you with us for our matchup today that looks at a Rutgers team that is thinking bold bit. They're coming off an off week, but they've got a good record and looking to improve. Meanwhile, Temple was expected to win last week. They thought they had a shot, but it didn't. they didn't get it done. Well, two weeks ago, they only lost by seven to Syracuse, so they felt they had a real good shot, but then they lost by 26 to Pittsburgh. They felt they were overconfident. Indeed, and that was the focus of Ron Dickerson's address to his ball club this week in practice. And we talked to Ron about it yesterday and his comments on refocusing his ball club. We had just come off of a four-game campaign. The four teams are in the top 25, and we had played what we felt was good, uh, considering our age. And uh, to go up against a team that, that uh, we felt was comparable to us in, in Pittsburgh, uh, I blamed myself after the game because I didn't prepare the guys right mentally or, or physically as uh, speaks for itself. Now, one thing Ron Dickerson and company will have to get done today is try to establish a run game. They're last in the conference, and it has been a struggle all year. Well, Davis out with the injury, so Gaddy has to take over. But again, last in the league in rushing, it would help them very much if they could. Now, here you see a nice run by Gaddy, but you don't see enough of this during their, their games. Juan Gaddy averaging 3.2 yards per carry, his best run last week against the Pitt Panthers. Meanwhile, the passing game is number one in the Big East, led by Henry Burris. 14 touchdown passes because they can't run, they have to throw the ball out. Guy's got a real strong arm, as you see here. Randy Kanzader at the end of this pass. Kanzader had three catches in this drive that led to a score last week against Pittsburgh. Now, defensively, their last two, the Temple Owls, last in defense in the Big East, but a couple of guys to watch, DeAndre McClurkin and Lance Johnstone. Yeah, one reason why their last is they're on the field all the time. Now, McClurkin, a big guy inside, also Johnstone outside. Very good technician, has good fundamentals, plays off the blocker and makes tackles. John Stone can make the play coming at him, and he can make it when it goes away from him. Now let's talk about Rutgers. Doug Graber's ball club last year, 0-2 coming off of bye week. So this is not something that Doug likes when you're off a week when you got the season under a roll. And that's certainly one of the topics that we talked about yesterday. And here's Doug addressing that very point. I don't really like off weeks. I think most coaches really don't. It has a tendency to really get your team out of rhythm a little bit. Uh, in our case, uh, you know, it may have helped us a little bit. We were so beat up, and uh, to get Ray Lucas uh, rested and sneathing, and, and at least uh, we're coming back for the last three games with a chance to be pretty healthy. We don't get Presley back, but other than that, we're in decent shape. Not as healthy as they would like, though. Number 44, Bruce Presley, out with a groin injury, so that makes the focus of the offense get Marco Battaglia the football. And the guy who gets in the football is their quarterback, Lucas. You know, he had a good stretch for a while, but then he got hurt in the Miami game. They feel he's now 100%. And Battaglia, he can make plays. As you see here against BC, just throw it up there. Battaglia takes it in and scores a touchdown. Now, earlier in the season against West Virginia, you, could, you can also see him take it long as he just runs down the seam here, catches it, and does things in the open field. 40 catches for Battaglia a second in the conference only to Pete Mitchell of Boston College. Defensively, Rutgers can put the rush on you. A couple of guys that you'll like, they're bookends, Bob Sneathan and Alcides Catano. Catano is a strong side linebacker. He can rush the quarterback and he makes plays. You'll see him here against BC putting pressure, beating the blocker, putting pressure on a quarterback, and then Sneathan against Miami earlier in the season. He is a very quick outside rusher, gets by the tackle here for the sack. And there you have it, Sneathan and Kitano. A couple of guys will be looking for this afternoon. The kickoff moments away, Rutgers and Temple. They've got it teed up, and we'll be back for that kickoff after these words from our local stations. Piscataway, New Jersey, central New Jersey, between New York and Philadelphia on a gorgeous day for some football for our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. The numbers, temperature 65 degrees, a delightful humidity at 58%. Wind, not too much of a factor, and partly sunny is our forecast for the remainder of this afternoon. 
Time now for Dave Jennings, Rolling Rock, Chalk Talk. Well, for the Temple Owls, it starts with Burris, their quarterback. He has got to be on. They don't run the football very well. He's got 14 touchdown passes. Also, defensively, they got to stay out of the 40s. In the last five games, they've given up 46 points a game. And thirdly, they can do that by stopping the run. Willis will be the guy running the football, so if they can do that, they've got a chance. Let's look at Rutgers right now. Rutgers, Willis has got to carry the load. Presley is out. Uh, Doug Graber has challenged him to carry, take the load today. Also, Lucas got to get back on track. He had a good stretch there for a while, but got hurt in the Miami game. With a bye week, they feel he's 100%. And thirdly, on the defensive side of the ball, as Burris is the guy that got to pressure Burris. He is Temple's offense, so they've got to get after him. Ron Dickerson. 46 years old in his second year at Temple. Very disappointed in his club's output last week at Pittsburgh. And Doug Graber, 50 years old, 24, 27 and one. The numbers, 30, 32 and one in six seasons as a head coach, he'd been at Montana State. Our officiating crew headed by Terry Monk this afternoon. Series note, Rutgers with the edge, and they've won three straight, and they've won it convincingly the last three years. 41 zip, 35 10, and 62 zip. But no time in this series has either team won more than three straight games. So let's see what gives this afternoon. Richard Maston to kick off for the Temple Owls. Terrell Willis is deep along with Kevin Williams. Short man, but Taglia takes it fair catch at the 13 to the chagrin but, of the Rutgers crowd. But Temple was offside, so I would think they might end up kicking this over. One of the players for, T for Temple was offside, and since Rutgers doesn't have good field position, I think they'll make it kick it over again. I saw number 22, Michael Roberts, a cornerback. Offside, kicking team. They got to kick it over. I would think that's a no-brainer. Maston standing on the field, expecting same. It was down on the near sideline. Offside on the kicking team will re-kick after a five-yard penalty. Inauspicious start for Ron Dickerson and his Temple Owls. They like to see your kids excited, but you got to contain some of that, especially on the opening kickoff. So the Temple Owls will move it back to the 30-yard line, kick off from there. Oh, what a day, though, huh? Spectacular. No we got November 5th. It's almost 70 degrees, sunny, no wind. I was thinking we're going to do this game. Need to bundle up today. <laughs> we still got play second half of the season to go there. Doug Graber, you're right. It's a, you couldn't ask for better conditions this afternoon. And, Doug Graber's ball club, 4-3-1, and 1-2-1 one. One, and one in the Big East, fifth in the conference, 1-1 one one here at Rutgers Stadium, and overall, Doug is 13-1 here at Rutgers Stadium, the only loss coming a few weeks ago here against the Miami Hurricanes. I got a question for you. That was a fair catch on the kickoff, right? How did one second go off the clock? We're at 14-59. It should either be 15 or it should be about 14-52, whatever. Maston will give it another shot. Williams and Willis standing now at their own 15. Challenge now to Maston to really get into this one. And he kicks it right to Willis at the 18-yard line. How much of a hole breaks free down the sideline. And finally taken out of bounds at the 43-yard line by number 38. That's Ted McDuffie. So that kickoff, not a five-yard penalty, more like about a 25-yard penalty as we look at Ray Lucas, who leads the Rutgers offense. Down by 38, Ted Ray Lucas hurt his shoulder a few weeks ago against Miami, trying to bounce back. Ken Damon, the leader on the offensive line, he goes 6'5", 285. And Reggie Funderburg, their number two receiver with 35 catches, six for touchdowns. Good starting position for the Scarlet Knights. Ball at the 44. They go with three wideouts. Jonathan Gibbs to the bottom of your screen. Lucas going to throw, looking for Gibbs, and he catches and pushes into Temple territory at the 42-yard line. McWilliams giving him a lot of cushion. McWilliams, one of the starting cornerbacks as we look at the defense for the Temple Owls. Alshermon Singleton had a good game last week. He leads the conference in fumbles caused with five. And in the secondary, Corey Green, a converted linebacker, moves over to strong safety as Alan Jackson moves to corner. Mike Williams was benched. The first and 10 for Rutgers. Temple territory. 
43 yard line. The movement. Willis stutter stepped and didn't get a lot. John Stone takes him down at about the 39. And the thing Graber was talking about with his challenge to Terrell Willis. Willis will have to run between the tackles. He's best getting outside, but with Presley unavailable, he's going to have to run between the tackles and be a lot more effective. Exactly, and they ran right at Johnstone that time. Damon came off and tried to block him, but I'll tell you, Johnstone, from what I've seen, plays off blocks as well as any linebacker I've seen. All at the 39 for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Play action. Lucas by the time. The tagger, they get him the ball. He's got the first down inside the 30 and fights his way to the 26 yard line. First down, Rutgers. Allen Jackson, number 41, with a tackle of gain of 13. Normally, Singleton would be in coverage on the tight end. Singleton wears number 94 in white. You'll see him to the left now. He lets the Taglia get out on the rollout now. There comes 94. He does not play the tight end. So Bataglia gets upfield in a couple of plays. Look where Rutgers is down to the 21 yard, uh, 26 yard line. Rutgers comes into today's game averaging 185 yards through the air, seventh in the conference. They're going to run it. Big Rome Wellis slips down close to the first down yardage. Andrew Brown, number 55, brought him down, but oh, another they, sizable gain as Rutgers eating up big chunks of yardage here. Did you see that block by Bridges, number 32? He just met Singleton, the strong side linebacker, and that's the key to the running game is the guy's doing the blocking. You ask Terrell Willis what uh, can make his game go, and he says, get the guys up front to block, and there's your fullback, and that's what he has to do, a good block that time by Bridges. And good thing about that block, you can hear it as well as see it. Second and one from the 17, and opening seconds here of the first quarter. We'll go to the power eye look. Willis, fumble, loose ball. Who comes up with it? <laughs> Rutgers has it. Rutgers maintains Boy, possession. That ball went into Rutgers, it's into Temple's territory, and a good job by the right guard, Kennedy. I don't think that Willis really got this ball. Let's take a look here. Well, he Never got it, put it just away. didn't hold on to it. They yep. catch a break. Look where the ball is. Amazing as the and ball gets down to the 11 for first down. Maybe Willis isn't used to carrying it here in the first quarter. Usually it's Presley. Again, Presley has that groin injury, so he is out today. He suffered that a couple of weeks ago at Boston College. First and 10 from the 11. Harper in motion. Not much doing there as Lance Johnstone makes the tackle. No surprise, you'll see a lot of that today. Lance real disappointed off the loss last week at Pitt. He said, I don't know what to say. Guys just didn't come ready to play. We, the players, we're the ones who are overconfident, so we got what we deserved. We got embarrassed, and hopefully we've been taught a lesson. How many tackles do you have last week? 20? 20 total, 15 solo. Lose the yard on the play ball back to the 12. Right in the middle of the field. The tag lay in motion. Lucas flushed. And down he goes. The sack by number 36, Tim Terry. The right defensive end makes a big play. First sack of the season for Terry. Not used to seeing a defensive end wearing a 30s number, but they have two light defensive ends, Tim Terry and Adrian Drones. Terry will be on the right side, 36. He's going against Damon, takes him outside, pushes him and comes inside. Pulls, pulls down Willis for the, uh, for the loss. And Lucas going back, does, sees that he can run, but here comes Terry for the tackle. Third and 12 now for the Scarlet Knights. Third down conversion. Rutgers second only to Syracuse in the conference. Lucas being pressured, flushed out with a lot of room. And blockers to the five and hit by Andrew Brown at the four-yard line. He'll be short of first down yardage. And, you have and a look. penalty flag as Lucas gets up and shoves off number 22, Robert McWilliams. Temper, temper, got to maintain composure here. See the look on his face. You have to wonder if that shoulder affected Lucas's ability to really plunge ahead because he's short of the first down right here as they talk about it. And watch Lucas, he's going to come right at you. He sees that he can run. Everybody's covered. Now watch when he gets down close to the goal line. A dead ball, personal foul against the defense. Half the distance to the goal, penalty, first and goal. 22, McWilliams was the last one piling on when Lucas was already down, so 
That's a huge play right sure there is. because they were short of the first down. It would have been fourth down. Chances are they would have kicked the field goal, but now they got a first and goal inside the, well, let's see where they put it, maybe about the one and a half yard line. Now they got four cracks at it. So two big penalties on the opening kickoff. It ended up being a 30 yard penalty against Temple. And now this one gives Rutgers a first down. Tough start for the out. Good start for the Scarlet Knights. Three tight ends. Willis throw it to the end zone. Touchdown. Touchdown to number 88, Jason Curry. Caught a touchdown pass against West Virginia. His second score of the season and only a second catch of the season. Well, how often do you see that down the goal line loaded up with your big people, bring in three tight ends. The defense becomes run conscious. You go with play action. Willis is the guy who would carry it. They suck everybody in. And the third tight end, Carey, just releases outside. Carey on the left side, just releases outside. The two guys there. There you go. See the bridges outside. Curry inside. Good pressure that time by Singleton, but a good job by Lucas. Is it a touchdown? Is it? Yes, it is. Off the extra point is Eddie DeBorg, and Eddie now 17 for 19 on the season. So Rutgers on its first drive takes it the distance to take a 7-0 lead over the Temple Owls. We'll return to Rutgers Stadium after these words from our local stations. Jason Curry, his second catch, paying dividends, second catch, second touchdown on the season. Nine plays, 56 yards, 430, very impressive for the Scarlet Knights. They got the benefit of a couple of penalties, a couple of key penalties on the opening kickoff. The resulting kickoff brought the ball out to midfield when Rutgers had it about the 18. And then on that third down play, third and long, Lucas took it down. Personal foul, extended the drive, so a couple penalties give him a 7-0 lead. Jeff Frederick, Damon Atwater, to receive the kickoff from Joe Kukowski. Tom Indio has replaced Atwater, Indio number 45 for the Aussies, deep with Jeff Frederick. 7-0 Rutgers. Four and a half minutes, and Jeff Frederick with a chance to return from a yard deep. To the 10, trying to get to the corner, gives ground and gets to the corner. 15, 20, and run out of bounds by number 12, Stephen Harper. So a nice return for Jeff Frederick. Frederick, eighth in the conference in kickoff returns and averaging just over 18 yards per return. Al's offense led by Henry Burris, the outstanding quarterback, the sophomore from Spiro, Oklahoma. John Summerday graded out 91% last week, their best lineman. And P.J. Cook, a pretty good tight end, 23 catches, four for touchdowns. And if you watch Cook, you notice he's 85. He is uh, down towards the bottom of the screen. See, he's flexed out a little bit. Gets him out in, in pass patterns a little more easily. You know what, the offside, offset eye, Juan Gaddy gets the call. About two, three yards. Mark Washington, number 23, the tackle for Rutgers. Keith Bryant, number 91, on that play also. Rashad Swinger constantly improving. The sophomore with two sacks on the season. Watch him on the defensive line along with Sneathan and company. And Mark Washington, the leading tackler on this ball club. And Dave Jennings, that not always a good sign when your strong team is your top tackler. No, he's up there a lot. And that, uh, you, you like to see your linebackers leading a tackle. Picked up two on that break. Second and seven. Morrison Gaddy, they run the sprint draw. Nothing happening there as Catano met him in the hole. Boy, and Keith Bryant ganged up with him. He's the big tackle inside, those two guys. And this is something we've seen. Two plays, they got four, four yards rushing, and that's one reason why Temple's had some trouble. And now it puts him in an obvious pass situation. So guys like Sneathan, who wears number 89, he likes to rush from the outside, and he's going against the big kid, John Clark. Clark, 330 pounds. John Clark, number 66, he had a massive block on a big screen play last week against Pitt. The blitz, Burris under pressure, throws. What a catch! 
big time catch by Mark Baxter, but it's probably going to be short of the first down. Came with a blitz up the middle that time as Rasan Giddings, the middle linebacker for Rutgers. You'll see him number 57 right side of your screen, but it's picked up nicely, roll out, and look at this catch. Unfortunately, it is just, no, they did give him the first down. They did give him the first down, so a nice catch that time by Baxter. Baxter, the former quarterback, all city in Philadelphia out of Jules Mass Bomb High School. Heck of a catch for Baxter's 28th reception of the season. Come on, just go. over the 41-yard line. 7-0 Rutgers. First possession by the Owls. Penalty flags. Get it to the corner to the 40. And run out of bounds by number 10, Curtis Trimmett. They'll pick one of three guys, jumped across, but I... Let's see how many yards. They're going to have to talk about this one because can't quite tell from here. About six-yard gain. They'll probably accept the penalty. All right, going across on the snap count up. Wait a second. Try and get back. Can't get back. A little bit of everybody. Yeah, it looked like Ranero was the guy who they got. Offside on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. They got five yards, they got about five or six yards on the run, so we're, so far they've run three times, gained about uh, 10, 11 yards, not bad, better than what their average is. Al's not a real good running team, averaging just 2.2 yards per rush. First down and five, the 42 burst, a straight drop, under pressure, sideline ball, Baxter tried to one hand catch and boy did he pay for it. Mark Washington had the opportunity and took it and lit him up. You know, it looked like a pretty catch, but you got to go up with two hands unless you can't get your both hands on it. Because with one hand, if you're going to get drilled like this, he would have been out of bounds anyway. But one hand, you're going to get drilled, you can't hold on to the football. Wow, that's a shot. You feel that up here? Oh, yeah. If you've played, <laughs> folks, you know how that feels. It's not a lot of fun. See, I don't know how that feels. <laughs> You had those cushy jobs. You, you right. probably had the smartest job going for 14 I years. Knew, I knew every referee. By his Absolutely. Watch this little dive I'll take, right? <laughs> <laughs> Second and five at the 42. Seven nothing Rutgers. 8.31 to go here in the first period. Run of delay. Gaddy gets the corner. 45, 47 yard line. He fumbles, but he was out of bounds. This is one thing that Temple has had to go to because they haven't been able to get the power running game. They do get another first down here. So they use a lot of delays, a lot of screens, a lot of draws. And that's something I'm sure that Coach Dickerson would like to get out of his offense and get into a power running game. But they're not real big up front. Gaddy, a heralded player out of Easton High School. Other action in the Big East. You saw Boston College. They overwhelmed Louisville Thursday night. Miami and Syracuse, great game. You check your local listings for that game coming up later on this afternoon. Balls at the 47 of the Temple Owls. This drive started back in Temple 26. Delay again. Gaddy, no, sir. A loss back to the 45 by Alcides Catano. See, one thing that hurts the running game in this respect is they flex the tight end, Cook, out. Catano, who is the strong side linebacker, he's able to get in that hole, and look at him right here, fills it nicely. Now they flex out the tight end to get him out in pass patterns, but that pretty much takes him away from uh, blocking on running plays. Well, I've been impressed with this kid, Catano, every game you I've done. You bet. Other action? Well, no other action. Idle is taking care of Virginia Tech, Pitt, and West Virginia. Second and 12. 45 for the out. Sid Morris goes in motion. Delay again. Gaddy finds the hole to the 50. Big time run and slips down at the Rutgers 46. He'll be about four yards short of a first down. Boy, I tell you, Rutgers keeps jumping around up there on the, on the defensive line, and you have to react to the ball, not the sound of the quarterback's voice, and right now they are reacting. But again, the delay here, this is something that Temple uses quite a bit of, is the, is the misdirection, the finesse. And now the Rutgers fans starting it in into it on a key third down play. Juan Getty. Temple's run the ball five times, passed it twice, third down and three from the Rutgers 46. Decent crowd here at Rutgers Stadium. Sid Morris in motion. Looking past Morris, catches and gets the first down for Temple to the 31. 
Thomas Kelly and Curtis Trivett bring him down. Sidney Morse, leading receiver for the outs. That's his 32nd catch of the season. Again, Rutgers comes on the blitz. They brought in Swartz that time, as well as Catano. But good job reading it by Burris. Finds his man right across the middle. Morse. And one thing I like about Burris is he spreads the ball around to all his receivers. He doesn't just key in on one guy. And Morse is one of the top receivers. That 14-yard pickup. Henry Burr is now the single season record holder at Temple University. He's just the sophomore. Delay again. Gaddy. And the repetitions have certainly helped Rutgers because they know what to look for on that one. Number 93, Jim Guarnera with the tackle. Well, we're halfway through the first quarter. How many times have we seen the draw? We've seen it at least three times. And now, as you said, Rutgers a little bit used to it. Again, Burris just dropping back, looking now. It goes with a quick draw. But Guarnera says, nope, I think I'm going to be there to make the stop. Gaddy, six rushes, 12 yards. He's lost the yardage on two runs. Second and 15, ball at the 37. Seven nothing Rutgers, 556 in counting left in the first period. Straight drop, flanker screen. Van Johnson, nothing doing there as he barely picks up a yard. Van Katano. Johnson, a depend dependable receiver, but Rutgers uh, looking for that short yardage throw. Yeah, Catano says no thank you. And in a sense, a three wide receiver set because Cook was flexed out wider than normal. Catano out on him, but he read the quick screen to the flanker and came inside to make the play. You're just joining us. Rutgers leads 7-0 as the Scarlet Knights went nine plays, 56 yards, covering four minutes and 30 seconds. The opening drive. Lucas to Curry, a one-yarder. It's the 11th play of this drive. Burris going to throw. Needs big yardage. Steps up. A lot of room. Got a man. Ben Johnson. First down, Temple. Down to the 17-yard line. He beat the double coverage. Kelly and number 22, Michael Roberts. And a nice thing that time about Johnson with the reception, he got the first down yardage, knew where the stakes were. Plenty of time for Burris, steps up, finds his man underneath the defensive back, and that was Roberts, number 22, for the first down. So a couple of big plays through the air, a 14-yarder on a third and three to Morris, and now a third and 14, they pick up 19 to Johnson. Al's moving. First and 10 at the Rutgers 17. Gaddy trying to get the corner and does uh, down to about the 11 yard line. You know, coming into this game, we said uh, Temple not a very good rushing team, but they have certainly run the ball well here on this first drive. They just take it outside. Now keep an eye on number 66, John Clark. He's tackle up at the top. Does he hold here? No, he. Uh, oh! Uh, <laughs> Big John. Just a little hope, but it wasn't a hold. You know why? They didn't call it. <laughs> Let go right at the right time. Get John a garment worker's uh, union card after that one. Second down and five from the 13. Number three, Eugene Cobreth in motion. Burris drills complete. P.J. Cook first and goal for Temple. They're down to the six-yard line, and a nice dart thrown by Burris. Ryan Sheridan brings him down for P.J. Cook, his 24th catch of the season. Well, Culbreth, who goes in motion to the left of your screen there, he draws the coverage away from Cook, who separates himself from Sheridan nicely, pulls it in and takes it down just outside the five-yard line. Good read that time by the quarterback. He's looking at P.J. Cook. Tight end. Good job by Burris. Read the coverage. Good looking drive by the Owls. It started back at their own 26 after a nice kickoff return by Jeff Frederick. 7 0 Rutgers, 3 30 and counting left in the first period. Burris, a dark touchdown temple. PJ Cook. What a throw by Burris. 7 6 Rutgers. And I swear that was the same pattern they just ran. The back over on the side. Cook open again away from Sheridan. For PJ Cook, his second catch of the day, his fifth touchdown of the season. And a surgical drive by Temple. Well, you'll see Cook's to the right of your screen. He can't quite see me here, but Burris just buries it in there nicely at the goal line. Good job by Cook. Two catches in a row, same pattern. You saw Morse outside. There's Richard Maston to attempt the extra point. Placement good, and so is the kick. 
3.29 to go, first period, and a good start by both of these ball clubs. They've taken it the length of the field to score. We're tied at seven, and we'll be back to Rutgers Stadium after these words from our local stations. Drive by the Temple Owls to tie the score at 7-7, first quarter with 3.29 to go. We'll return to Rutgers Stadium to do that when we return from these messages. is Ford Taurus, America's best-selling car. Perhaps it's the 220 horsepower, no compromise performance of Taurus SHO. The combination of outstanding design and extra room in Taurus wagon. Or the latest addition to the Taurus family, the sporty new Taurus SE. All these choices, sharing the Taurus reputation for quality, safety, and value, help explain why Taurus is the best-selling car in America, again. Back here at Rutgers Stadium, Dave Sims and Dave Jennings on the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. Terrell Willis, Kevin Williams, deep to receive the kickoff from Richard Maston, and now we know why Doug Graber was a little apprehensive going into this game. This is only the first series. It's tied at 7-7, but certainly Temple had a lot to prove. Willis will take it from his nine to the wedge and breaks it. He could go 40. Maston didn't get him. And he ran out of bounds at the 49-yard line. Maston did slow him up just a little bit. Allen Jackson finally stopped him. Boy, you got to see this block by Curry. He's number 88. He scored the touchdown before, and he just leveled one of the guys from 88. Watch 88 left side of your screen. Watch this block here. Crush. And there's your hole. And both kickoffs now. Rutgers has started an outstanding field position, so Coach Dickerson has got to address this problem right now. Last time, they started from their own 44 after a penalty, offside penalty, against the Temple Owls at 7-7. Lucas, a lot of time, a throwback screen to Willis with a lot of room and blockers to the 45, down at the 41-yard line, close to a first down. McDuffie finished off the play, the initial hit by Robert McWilliams, number 22. Now, one thing here, Willis has, in a sense, gives this away. As you can see, the rushing defensive end, Drones, just gets by Willis. Watch Willis just pass him by. Now, Drones should realize this, and here's the play. Willis just takes it up. He's going to be tired, young man, after this ball game. You bet. With Presley out. Willis's backup is a youngster, redshirt freshman, Damon Hamlin. 5'7", about a buck 90. There's Willis. Needs to carry a big load. Second and one. Fullback Bridges. Only a second carry of the season. Scoring drive for the Temple Owls. Very impressive. And it took a lot of time off the clock. DJ Cook. Second touch is a touchdown. Number five on the season for PJ. You know, that's got to give Temple some confidence right there. That nice drive. They ran the ball seven times, passed it seven times, which isn't their normal balance. So they've got to feel good right now, at least on the offensive side of the ball. One thing that Temple, that Temple did answer Pitt last week after Pitt scored on the opening drive. Here's Willis. Breaks the tackle to the outside. Cut it back inside and hammered at the 31 and pushed back. Well, he breaks the tackle by Singleton, who is a strong side linebacker. Singleton wears number 94. He'll be on your left side. You can see him here. Now, let's see him meet him in the hole. No, nope, breaks the tackle, and Willis takes it outside. This is where you normally see Willis do his damages on the outside. But again, with Presley out of there, he's going to have to do more inside running. And the Rutgers Scarlet Knights about a half a yard short of a first down. The Grabers Club looking at a second and short. Willis, 27 yards on five carries. And with a buck 35 and counting remaining in the first period. 7-7 ball game. He brought in a second tight end. He wears number 87, Woolridge on the right side. Quick count. 
Willis looking and finding yardage. Picks up the first down, close to the 25, but a fumble, let's see. Temple says they have it. Let's get official word from Terry Monk and his crew. Second time Willis has fumbled this afternoon. First well, time he was bailed out by Chris Kennedy, the right guard, and bailed out again. Now, last time he fumbled, they gave him the ball on the very next play. Now, Willis, we'll see if he fumbles here. Keep an eye on Willis right here. Knees go down right there. Now, where's the ball? Where's the ball? Okay, we can't it's on quite the, it's see on it. the other side, yeah. Ball did come loose. Couldn't quite tell from that angle, but they ruled he was down by contact. Picked up the first down, nonetheless. Ball at the 26. Lucas sprint out, throwing short to Harper, and he's dragged down. By number four, Corey Green. Loose ball, Lance Johnstone picks it up, and he's got it back for Temple at the 39. The ball hit the referee on the sideline. Stayed in bounds, and Lance Johnstone recovers for the owl. Boy, Johnstone makes plays, and he doesn't make the tackle, but he's there to pick up the football. Now, watch the ball when it comes free. You're going to see Harper take it quickly on the outside here. He turns up field, and on the tackle by Corey Green, see he's a little off balance. He just punches the ball out. Now, it hits the official instead of going out of bounds. If that official isn't there, and he should be there, the ball stays in bounds, and Johnstone picks it up. Terrific break for the Owls. Rutgers, seventh in turnover ratio. Up the middle, not a lot doing as he gets up to the 41-yard line. Number two, that's Frank Carter. 5'9", 186 pounds out of Deptford, New Jersey. You know, you, you go back to that fumble. Fisher was right there where he was supposed to be. It's just one of those plays that uh, went against Rutgers. But I'll tell you, they put the ball on the ground three times now, so you got to figure they're going to give the ball up at some point in time. You were in the right spot. No, I'm not criticizing. You were in the right spot. <laughs> now he's on the, on the play inside. Picked up two, second and eight. Here's Burris. Got time. Flips outside. Sid Morse with the catch and slips at the 45. Gitano and Price covering for Rutgers. <laughs> Up to the 45, pick up the four. Very interesting first quarter of action here at Rutgers Stadium. Both teams took the initial drive and scored and were tied at seven. We'll be back with second quarter action after these words from our local stations. Cy Sperling, president of Hair Club for Men. Although I was Hair Club's first client, I had my hair done for personal reasons prior to going into this business. At 27, I was overweight, my hair was thinning. I used to sweep the hair on top of my head, spray it. I'd have nightmares about windy days, going swimming. My new hair made a world of difference. Whether it's wet, I'm just blow drying, or just running my fingers through my hair, it feels like my hair. If your hair is thinning, call our toll-free number now. We'll send you our 16-page color brochure free now this state has always uh, represented opportunity for people from around the country and from around the world uh, and we're losing that spending and taxes are driving jobs and opportunity out of this state i want people to believe in the future of this state i want to believe that this is where the jobs and the opportunity are i want them to believe that they can live in their community safe and that the schools are educating their kids uh, i want them to believe that the best of the state is ahead of us give change a chance don't waste your vote Vote for the Pataki McCoy team. Third time Rutgers has fumbled today. Here's the ball. There's the official. Tries to get out of the way, but it hits his knee. Probably would have gone out of bounds. But again, Rutgers has put the ball on the ground three times, and they've got to hold on to football. Good hustle by Reggie Funderburg to stop further damage. John Stone twice now has made second team all conference. And seen just about everybody in the conference this year. He's as good an outside linebacker as there is in the conference, no doubt about it. You know what I like about him, and I said this earlier, good fundamentals. He squares up nicely, plays off the blocker. He's a good tackler. You know, one thing we've seen a lot this year is guys trying to hurt people tackling. Instead of wrapping them up, he does a real nice job wrapping up the guys. Lance Johnstone out of Germantown High School in Philadelphia. Good passing day for both quarterbacks. Burris, seven for eight. Lucas, five for five. Third down and five. For the Al, Burris has counted, really been getting to the Rutgers land, and down he goes! Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, they pitched it out to Gaddy! Gaddy's down the sideline, boy, that play... That was like it, the Statue of Liberty play. Sure was, it faked everybody at number 56. Rudy Smith thought he had a sack. 
Gaddy, huge play, first down for the Temple Owls in Rutgers territory. Watch Gaddy, left side of the screen, you'll see him momentarily. He's back in the split back formation. He's happy right now. Okay, you'll see him top of your screen. It's just a little draw here, Statue of Liberty play. Nobody sees him. He is gone. Now, again, the misdirection, the delays has worked so far for Gaddy. He takes it upfield down to the Rutgers 33-yard line. Gaddy with a big day, 40 yards on eight carries, and that was a great play. Look at that, eight carries, 40 First and yards. 10. Temple Owls at the 33-yard line and moving. 7-7 seven, seven ball game. First minute, second quarter here at Rutgers Stadium. Burris, Gaddy, a lot of room, 30, 25, and he's inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Number 23 comes up to make the tackle, Mark Washington. Open up a big hole. Absolutely. John Miss Clark, Ed Bowen. Left side of the offensive line. Look at that hole right there. Big block by John Clark, number 66. And I'll tell you something. This is going to have effect on a passing game now because it's going to get Rutgers back on their heels a little bit. Yep. This running game is going beautifully for the Temple Owls. Sidney Morse with a big, big call. And assistant coach Steve Goldman is up there making some of the calls and the glasses on the left side. Offensive coordinator Nick Gasparato has been hailing. Wish him well. Carter stumbles, picks up maybe a yard or two. First quarter numbers, Dave Jennings. Yeah, it could have been a turnover. You see zero and one, but that could be two or three for Rutgers. But things quite pretty even. If you look at this, if you just look at this, you'd say, well, we probably have an even score. Well, we do. It's 7-7. And good Frank, rushing, though. Good rushing by Temple right now. They've only got 18, but they're up to about 50 or 60 right now. Right, 23 yards on that last Gaddy run, and Carter picked up enough for the first down. Ball's at the 23 for Ron Dickerson's club. Doug Graber's team, 0-2 last year, coming off of bye weeks. Al's at the 23 and threatening in a 7-7 ball game. Burris, the delay. Gaddy looking, not finding. They found trouble in Keith Bryant. Keith Bryant, his fourth tackle for a loss this season. Most of their success running so far has been outside the tackles. They try to take it inside. Keith Bryant, the big defensive tackle. He says, no, you're not running here. See, they can't run up the middle because they're too big with number 99 Swinger and 91 Keith Bryant. Gaddy, 45 yards on 10 carries, and he's been tackled for losses on three occasions. Second and 13. Rutgers showing blitz. Burris sees it. They pick it up. Burris throwing. Got a man. Van Johnson down to the eight-yard line. You hear the groan as Johnson takes it inside the five. Excellent. The groans grow to booze as he beats the coverage of number 21, Thomas Kelly. First down. First and goal, Temple. Excellent call, David. You called the blitz. They brought the linebackers inside, but credit the Temple offensive line with picking up everybody. Look at Sidney Morris going down, number 21. Gaddy staying in there. They had maximum protection, and they were able to find Johnson down towards the goal line. So an excellent job by the offense line. Now look, everybody, including the backs, pick up people. Burris has, in a sense, on a blitz all day. Man-to-man -man coverage out here by Michael Roberts, but Johnson got open. They go with the pitch to Gaddy outside. Almost beats the corner. Mark Washington, fine tackle. Shows why he's the leader for the Scarlet Knights. Well, there's just a simple one-on-one -on -one play. He found out that time Mark Washington just a little bit better. Gaddy couldn't get it. And he did not get quite the mood, a move he was looking for. Owls have improved dramatically in terms of scoring 24 points this year. You know, something you were talking to me before the game, very young team, these to the Temple Owls. I think you might have the numbers. Indeed, and uh, Ron Dickerson on offense has two senior starters, six sophomores and three juniors. Play clock at 10 as Johnson resets second in goal. Johnson coming back in motion. They show blitz. Burris back to throw. End zone. Touchdown, Temple. Van Johnson and the Owls take the lead. 13-7. No, you can't give enough credit to this offensive line. How much time did Burris have? Burris dropped back. He kept looking. He kept looking. And found Johnson open for a touchdown. For the Temple Owls. Now, Burris is going to You see... Uh, Number 59 at Swartz rushing, but he gets picked up nicely, and Johnson gets away from his man. Touchdown. 
Where does Trivet there on coverage? But there had to be somebody else there to help. And Johnson, third TD of the season, Mastin's extra point. Put it in the books. So with 11 16 to go, second period. Henry Burst on fire, eight straight completions. He leads the outs to a touchdown to that man, Van Johnson. 14 7 Temple, back after these messages. Van Johnson with a touchdown for the Temple Owls. Henry Burris scorching right now. Nine plays, 60 yards, and here's another look at the score, Dave Jennings. Okay, yeah, Johnson on the right side, but look at the protection he gets. No, Nobody getting close. Johnson just runs down, just curls it outside. He's open for the touchdown. And now, coming to this game, Burris had 14 touchdown passes. Now he's got 16. On a rope, too. Doug Graber, some reason for concern. His club down here at home. And so far this season at home, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and Big East play one and one, four and one overall. And he is 13 and one here at this stadium. Doug Gray, his teams are at this stadium. One concern for him has to be the running game for Temple, how well it's going here early on. Rutgers sixth in the conference against the rush. Right now, the Temple Owls have established that part of the game, which will continue to keep it open for Henry Burris. A short kick down to the four for Willis. Got a hold. They run the reverse to Harper, and it was sniffed out. Robert McWilliams was waiting for that. He played his lane and played it well. You know, you have to wonder. They just returned two kicks for about 50, 60 yards. Why run a reverse? <laughs> Ray Lucas has the challenge to him. Henry Burris is on fire, and Lucas has got to heat up for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And yesterday we talked to Ron Dickerson, Temple's coach, about what he'll have to do to stop Ray Lucas of Rutgers. Ray uh, is just going to add some more uh, burdens to, to our already uh, struggling defense, but but uh, we're going to try to contain him, which is, which is tough because not many people have done that all year. Back to live action is Terrell Willis trying to get outside. Nice yardage. It's up about eight across the 20 yard line. Run out of bounds by Ted McDuffie. Number 38. Some changes in that secondary for Ron Dickerson's Owls. Mike Williams was benched. Alan Jackson moved over from strong safety to the left corner. Phil Cox getting a lot of action. You see Willis on that one play on that last run, though, how he likes to get it outside. Started up inside, but he likes to get it outside there. Again, they're missing the presence of uh, Mr. Bruce Presley with that groin injury. They say it's just time. Time will heal it. Hopefully for Rutgers, he'll be back next week. Doug Graber said, hey, that challenge, Terrell. You gotta get it done, big guy. Second and short, Willis finds the first down and more. Across the 30 to the 32-yard line. John Stone brought him down. Not the typical John Stone tackle, but he still makes the play as Willis, a little stutter step, gets it into the hole. Now you see here, Willis again carrying the ball. Now watch when he gets through the line and meets a little inside out move. Again, John Stone made the tackle and he makes a lot of them for this. He's one of the top tacklers in the Big East. Both offenses moving up and down the field. Impressive start for Terrell Willis. 10.45 to go. Second quarter, and Temple leads it 14-7. Lucas, 5 for 5, going for more. Home run ball, down the sideline. Harper's there, can't get it. Just overthrew him at the 28-yard line. Had him. Just overthrew him by about a yard. Beat double coverage of McWilliams and McDuffie. And a little play action to get him rolling out. He has a little personal block at that time. As Matt Brown pulls out in front of him, just throws it deep. How close is it? Maybe a yard. Clunk. Is it going to be good? No. Almost. A little more air under underneath that one. He might have hit a shot. Second and 10 from the 31. Three wides to the bottom of your screen. They run it, though, on the draw. Willis hit. Oh, oh, baby, is he hit by Lance Johnstone right in the hole. It looked like he was going to get a lot more. Well, they ran the trap that time as Matt Brown, the left guard, pulled to his right. But I'm telling you, Johnstone is as fundamentally a sound tackler. And this is something we like to see because we've talked about it over the course of the year. A little trap. You see 63 pulling across. But look in the hole. 54, that's Johnstone. Bang. That is a fundamental tackle right there. 
Vance nope. Johnstone. Just shot him. See that? <laughs> Averaging ten and a half tackles a game, and he's in the top ten tacklers for the Big East. Focus to throw. In trouble. Flushed. Throws across his body, almost picked off. Let's see, and he flags. The Rutgers crowd says yes. The referees say no. And to the Funderburk, you've got to come back to the ball. You can't stop in the middle of the field and expect the ball to come to you because you give the chance for the defensive back to come in and make a play. McDuffie closed in a hurry on that play. See, now Funderburk keeps coming back to the ball. Watch him roll out to his right under pressure. But number six, right in the middle of your screen. He says he's open. Now watch him just stop here. He stopped. He's got to come back to the ball. If he closes the angle, he's got a reception. First punt of the day. Jared Slovin has had his uh, problems this season. Frederick gets away. What a temple bounce. And it bounces back to the 39-yard line. A nice play by Robert Seeger, a backup tight end. Prevents further damage on a 28-yard punt. So punting has been a sore spot for the Scarlet Knights. Temple's offense on fire. They'll take over. 9.41 to go up, 14-7. Back after these words from our local stations. First and 10. Jimmy! Anybody can take you to the top of a mountain, but when you come down out of the clouds, you need the strength for what you face every day. Introducing the all-new Jimmy for the way you really drive. See the all-new Jimmy at your Tri-State GMC truck dealer today. Mario Cuomo is a national leader protecting freedom of choice for all women. George Pataki, now that he's running for governor, claims he's also pro-choice, but he has a 10-year anti-choice voting record. He has been repeatedly supported by state and local right-to-life groups, and last year, George Pataki was the only Republican state senator to receive a 100% rating from Pat Robertson's Radical Right Coalition. George Pataki, when it comes to our freedom of choice, we can't afford his politics as usual. High fly ball, she is gone! And the Yankees are champions, and look at Barrow! Baseball's Greatest Games returns to Sports Channel for more memorable moments. Go back with us through 40 years of baseball history for the triumphs, miracles, and unforgettable memories. Baseball's Greatest Games returns in November only on Sports Channel. Burris has Temple on top 14-7 and Burris with 16 TD passes this season. That's a 16-year Temple high. Brian Brumell had 22 in 1979. Running game has worked. It continues to work. Caddy, big yardage, about eight yards. Across the 45 to the 47. You notice Rutgers had their three linebackers up in the line, indicating blitz, but Burris waited out, did not call the audible, stayed with the running play. And how about that, averaging a couple of yards on, on running plays. They got eight yards on first down. See all these guys, now they back out, so he stays with the running play. Good job by the offensive line, blocking number 49, Bressel, the middle linebacker, eight yards. Summer day, number 71, a good block on Bressel, 49. 12 carries, 54 yards for Juan Gatti. Second and two at the 47 for the Owls. Gaddy again. Gaddy just short of the first down. Nice play by number 91, Keith Bryant. Keith Bryant smelled that one out from the get-go. He has had a pretty good first quarter here of the four defensive linemen for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. You can see 91 right there as Bryant fights off the block of Berger the center and takes it out for the tackle. Keith Bryant out of Largo, Florida. Came into the game with two sacks. Big play here. Temple four for four on third down. They're fifth in the conference in that category. Burris, Frank Carter got the first down. They pushed the pile as they ran behind number 71, John Summerday and Eric Johnson on the right side. First down, Al. So with sophomore Danny Davis out, Gaddy getting most of the action, and then they bring in Frank Carter to spell Juan Gaddy. 
Florida State with an early lead. Duke hammered last week by the Seminoles. That was not a surprise. Penn State, huge favorite against Indiana. Ball just into Rutgers territory. Let's call it the 49. Burris slips. They tripped on once his he center. Goes once he goes down, he can't get up in college ball. He saw he tried to get up. <laughs> they said no. So that's a loss back to the Temple. 45-yard line. One thing you have to do, and, and you, you find this out once every two or three games, get your feet away from the center, because the center or sometimes a guard will step on your foot as you're trying to pull out of there, and it's very Second painful, down. and of course and you lose yards. Bet. Burst getting a lot of notice today, but let's pay tribute to that offensive line of Clark, Bowen, Berger, Summerday, and Johnson. Got a good job on the run game. Lost five on the play. Make the draw. Smith pursuing almost and should have been picked off by Curtis Trivet. You know, I don't think Burris even saw Trivet because he was underneath the coverage. Watching his receiver down the sideline and what pressure that time by the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. Look at the pressure inside. As they Randy's Rudy Smith gets to him, but he didn't see Trivet. Notice he had Cook, but Trippett saying, I should have had this. I should have had this. Yes, he should have. Would have been his third pick of the season. He had one for a touchdown against Kent earlier this year. Another third down situation for the Owls. Five for five of the day. Pro set. Third and 15, the draw. Gaddy, no. Big play for Rutgers. Rashad Swinger, the other tackle. We've talked about Bryant. But that time they felt that Rutgers was going to bring it, so they decided to go with the draw, which they use a lot, and they use it a lot in the first quarter. But Rashad Swinger wears number 99 in red. You see him left side of your screen right here. Fight off the block. No way. Beat the block of the center, Tom Berger. Aston. Check that John Shea in for the punt. Averaging close to 38 yards per punt. Takes his time, gets a good high spiral. Funderburg watches it, picks it up at about the eight. Coverage there, and they knock him out of bounds, but a face mask call will be forthcoming against Temple's number 34, Oren Marshman. A 48-yard punt, a return of five yards. Well, that little change of direction got the face mask for Rutgers. Ball oh, face mask, five-yard penalty against the kicking team on the run back, five-yard penalty from the end of the run, first and ten. Just an inadvertent face mask, but the change of direction he reached out that time. 14-7, Temple Owls over the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. We'll be back to Piscataway after these messages. Good ball game here at the Scataway, New Jersey, Rutgers Stadium at Temple Inn, the Knights 14-7, 6-19 to go. This copyrighted telecast is produced by authority of the Rutgers Football Conference and is intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience. Any publication, reproduction, retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Big East Football Conference is prohibited. Ball at the 17. Last time Rutgers had it, they started at the 15-yard line. Willis does well to get to the 20. A lot of people involved on that one for the Temple Owls. One of them, number 95, Andy Phipps. Again, Bruce Presley not on the field for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. He's got that groin injury. What we normally see is a balance between him and Willis, but Willis has been the main guy. And we talked to Doug Graby yesterday. He said, we put the challenge to Willis. We said, you got to pick it up. You got to be the guy and carry the load today because Presley's not there. And an inside game is a major part of this uh, offense for Rutgers. Terrell out of Orange High School. Second down and seven at Temple dominating at time of possession to this point. Both this play action. Throws to Bataglia. Got the first down. He beat Johnstone out of bounds at the 30. First down, Rutgers. 
Well, we two talked about that before. When did that get at the Marco? Yeah. Two excellent tight ends in this conference anyway. Mitchell up at BC and Battaglia here. They're among the leaders. Battaglia right side. He seemed just release across the formation. The weak side linebacker Johnstone has to pick him up. A little late getting there. Battaglia with a nice play and there's a good tackle by Johnstone. But a first down for the Scarlet Knights. Balls at the 30 yard line. Two catches, 23 yards for Marco Battaglia. Ties him for the lead in reception to Pete Mitchell. Willis searching and not finding anything. Barely back to the line of scrimmage. Give some credit to DeAndre McClurk at number 89 and 96 also in on that play. T. Lang Lloyd. Temple's front four. T. Lang Lloyd now, number 96. He's 6'2", 265, a sophomore. Andy Phipps, 6'3", 275. He's a sophomore. McClurkin, 6'4", 295, a senior. He's 89. And Tim Terry, a little guy, 6'3", 235. They have a young defense uh, club for Temple. Three senior starters, five sophomores, and three juniors. Second and nine. Lucas over the middle, caught. It'll be short of a first down by Bataglia, coverage by Brown. And Brown tried to reach in front yeah. and knock it down, but he was late. Kind of looked like a basketball player boxing out that time, Bataglia did, as he just released and curled inside the middle linebacker, Brown. Left side of your screen, you could barely see Bataglia release, and then to just to drill it in there, and he's got him boxed out. See, he's got him boxed out here, pulls it in, dead ball. Good target, Bataglia. You know, we Whole talk family sitting right in front of us right. at 6 3 2 four. A lot of Bataglias here today. Easy to find, too. They've got Scarlet on, and number 81 are sitting at the 45-yard line behind the Rutgers bench. Great count. Willis looking for the corner. Got it and more. Brought down at the 50. Corey Green has to come over, but a nice job to create some room on the right side. Chris Kennedy, Robert Barr made it happen for and, Terrell Willis. And Marco Battaglia went in motion. Now Battaglia, nice block. He just pushes out Corey Green. You'll see him coming to us. Now watch number four and right. You see him get pushed out right there. There's your block and a big hole. He did does make the tackle, but about 12 yards downfield. Yeah. Good thing he did, too. He did a nice job to recover. Good pop by Battaglia. Ball at midfield. Rutgers driving, Knights trail, 14-7 here at home, the final home game of the 94 season, 3.30 left in the second period. Locus, right up the middle, Willis breaks it, breaks it big, a blown tackle. First down, Rutgers at the 20-yard line, Corey Green goes for a ride and finally brings him down. And a player is hurt on the field for Temple. That's McClurkin. He is down on the field as the trainers come out to look at him. But Willis with a nice block from Battaglia on Jason Davis, a defensive end. Look at Battaglia right there blocking 35. That's a nice block. And Willis takes it upfield. A couple of missed tackles. Missed tackle right there by Phil Cox. And Green downfield. But meanwhile, McClurkin back on his 45 is down. That speed is deadly. Terrell Willis. Doug Graber said the fastest player he's ever been associated with. McClurkin down because he was buried on that last play. McClurkin right there, top of your screen, 89. He kind of gets buckled under right there. Left leg, you can see it. It's either knee or ankle. I think it's the ankle. He yeah. saw the play and reacted to it and then was polished off by the fullback, Wes Bridges. He looks like he's in some pain. McClurkin, a big kid out of Philadelphia, 6'4", 295. At a University City High School, majoring in radio, TV, and film. You can always tell the severity of the injury when he gets up. Does he put weight on it or not? Trainer Dwight Stansberry and crew, team physician Ray Moyer out there. Later on today, check your local listings. This a big one. Miami, Syracuse, they vie for the top of the Big East Conference. Syracuse at 4-0 in the conference. Miami at 3-0. Miami's given up just 12 points in its three conference games. While Syracuse has given up 105. The clerk and able to get up. And now get him off the field. Stay with us. Halftime. We'll take a look back at last week of the Big East. We'll have a Big East quiz. The essay is a bear. <laughs> Stats and highlights also coming up. Is that a take-home exam? <laughs>
Now here, you see how he can't put much pressure on it, so we will try to get that information to you, but that's it's nice to see him get off the field. Wild card weekend for a Big East Caravan next week. Check those local listings. We could be in a city near you. Mario Ayala is in McClurkin's place now. Ayala wears number 67 in white. First down for Rutgers at the 21. Willis has ripped off runs of 12 and 29 in the last two plays. And for more, great block by Bridges to the corner. Steps inside. It'll be first and goal for Rutgers at the five-yard line. And they ran right where McClurkin was. McClurkin replaced by Ayala, but a great block, as you said, by Bridges right at the point of attack. And look at this, 14 carries, 111 yards. Willis is answering the call today. Big fullback leading up in the hole. Here's the block. Look at that block on Brown, the middle linebacker. Now Willis just takes it where he likes to go outside. It's a pretty good play by McWilliams, though. Good open field tackle. One off still the ball down at the five yard line. Now a timeout on the field. Temple calls it. There's a good reason. This drive started back at the Rutgers 17, and this has been a big Terrell Willis drive. 12, 29, and 16 yards. The last three carries. And Marco Battaglia with a couple of catches, too. You know, people may be a little surprised at the score right now. Is reading the local papers here, people felt like Rutgers would have a pretty big uh, advantage over Temple. But one thing we talked to Doug Graber yesterday about, he said last week, Rutgers uh, Temple went into the Pittsburgh game feeling they could win, and they really played poorly, and he wasn't sure how they would respond. You always hate to see a team respond, because he felt Coach Dixon would be pretty tough on this week and they would come out playing hard <laughs> and uh the guess was not a tough one for doug graber because ron, ron dickerson said we had a good week and yeah it was a tough week we look at bruce presley who would love to be contributing to this offense this afternoon part of our wild card weekend next week some good matchups syracuse and bc a couple of uh, teams that are very much in the bowl picture and we're talking about top flight bowls too and rutgers and virginia tech They've scored a lot of points the last two years. An improved West Virginia club at Temple, Pittsburgh. They get the short straw. They have to play Miami. It's on the schedule. It couldn't be avoided. First hit goal at the five for Rutgers. Down 14-7. Funderburg in motion. The sprint out runs into Bridges. Lucas close to a touchdown. They may push him in. Temple almost pushed him in. It almost looked like they wanted to run the option there. Tom Wright was in the game for Willis, and it was not executed nearly well at all. Again, Willis out, Wright is in. You'll see him run into, right, right, uh, run into Bridges right here. Looks like they want to run the option. They still made a lot of yardage out of a, what appeared to be a busted play. Now Willis will come back in, an extra tight end will come back in down to the one yard line. Big bridges down here. They also brought in a tall receiver, Chris Hutton. Watch out for the alley oop. Chris Hutton, 6'5", 200, he's number nine. And Hutton at the bottom of your screen. They run it short, touchdown Rutgers. Willis. And if you weren't expecting that cannon boom, I know you were surprised. And now keep in mind that play a little bit later in the ball game when they get down in the goal line. But Willis coming back in the game at the 159 mark, one point short of tying it up. They just load it up, power eye, bring in an extra tight end, put him in the backfield. Woolridge, that's 87 right down here at the bottom of your screen, making a nice block and takes it in mighty easily. I want to tell you that number 32, Wes Bridges, is earning his meal tonight. He is laying the wood to a lot of people. Smoke on the field. <laughs> From that cannon, which is right over there in that corner to your right. Remember the last time we were here? That scared the daylight oh, out of me. Boy. The guys in the truck admitted that they jumped. Did a little cat claw in the ceiling deal. <laughs> See what happened in the Alamo Dome last night with the yes. fire seconds? Well, the board didn't hit that real well, but he put it through, and that's what counts. And it's here, 10 to 15. Electrocurricular activities. Oh, Wolf, Wolf played a game already. 91, Keith Bryant getting in Johnstone's face, and Johnstone cannot be lost to Temple. Good ball game here at Rutgers. 
14-14 is the score. I'd have to say this is somewhat of a surprise right here. Again, most people feeling that the Rutgers heavily favored, but Rutgers hasn't played great this season, you know? That's right. They have played great. Temple giving up a lot of points. They've held that down. They've given up 46 points a game the last five games. Now, if you're in the end zone, you'll see Willis come right at you for the touchdown. Willis had, going away from you, actually 31 with good block by Bridges, 32. Just takes it in standing up. And when you're running back and take it in standing up from a two tight end formation power eye, your offensive line and those guys up front have done a pretty good job. Both guys up front have done a pretty good job. Temple offensive line, Rutgers offensive line. At the 159 mark, it is a tie ball game. Well, that drive highlighted by the heroics of Terrell Willis and Marco Bataglia. Mainly Willis, though, as he got it done on the ground with 62 yards. He's gone over 100 today. 14-14 ball game. India, 45, waiting Kukowski's kick along with Jeff Frederick. Frederick, a good return last time after 26 yards. Turnable kick, although it didn't go out of bounds. Okay, it looked like it had a little hook on it. Had a little hook on it, went out of bounds. So Temple will take over at the 35. So that's a big mistake by sure Rutgers. Was. You know, it's just trying to put it over towards the sideline. Illegal procedure on the kicking team. Kick is out of bounds. It'll be placed at the 35-yard line, first and 10. So that gives Temple good field position. Sure Plenty of time left. 159 to go and. Interesting that they were kicking it, trying to keep see it away this? from a little this? lesson there. If I had a bad kick, I always walked away from my coach. I found out where he was. I go down to the other end. That's right. And they, always, they usually had the headset on so they couldn't run after you. Tethered down. Wait till they get wireless. You won't be able to use it. <laughs> In reverse, it's had an outstanding day. That's Morrison motion coming on the draw. Gaddy finds it outside. Across the 40, nice yardage, and Juan Gaddy running with authority. Last week we took him to task on an 18-yard run where he ran out of bounds. This time he's taking on and delivering blows to uh, tacklers. He beat Granera that time. Granera had to play cold, and then he just went outside of Granera. So a good gain there at 45-yard line. Second down, 43-yard line. Burris back quickly with time. Got a man open. Baxter breaks the tackle. 30. Got the ball holding it loosely. Doubles up. Down to the 15-yard line. First and 10 for the Owls on a lightning strike. 42 yards Burris to Baxter. And he got between defenders and Burris did an excellent job reading that. Time has stopped because they're resetting the chains. They don't have to hurry. They're down on the 15-yard line. If I'm Temple, I take my time here. You don't want Rutgers to get the ball back after you take what you think would be taking the lead right here. Burris looking, stepping, finding Morris. He gets down to the 11-yard line, a pickup of four. That's fine. No need for a timeout here. Let the clock run. You're probably going to only have four plays anyway. What teams don't want to do is call timeouts, give, give Rutgers the ball back at the end of the first half. So don't call a timeout here. In reverse. On a tip. I mean, that ball was absolutely drilled in the only place it could be. Little jump there by Rutgers. They get back. No flag. Second down the pitch. Gaddy. Shifting, runs into trouble and goes down at about the 12. They have lost the yard. Now you can call your timeout because you're down to 38 seconds. And what I would, you know, if you're an experienced center that time, you see the guys jump across, snap the ball. Number one, you get five yards. You stop the clock at that point. But they call a timeout here, 14-14, and good ball game. Rutgers has all three of its times out. Ron Dickerson's Owls have one timeout remaining. From the end zone. And between, between defenders, you can see the two defenders catches right between, and the Washington doesn't make the tackle, so Baxter just continues. Now see, you called it, he holds the ball a little loosely. That could come back to haunt him a little bit later in the ball game. Last week on a big 63-yard screenplay, he was carrying it in his right hand, running down the sideline. Mark Baxter has got big hands, a former quarterback. He ran out of gas, and Dorsett caught him last week, but that was a precarious move, and you notice he did double up finally. 
You know, I would bet then that he hasn't fumbled the ball yet because if he does, someone will get after him and then he'll start putting it away. Burris, 11 for 13, 126 yards and two touchdowns. Ron Dickerson said he would have a renewed effort and performance from his owls this week, and indeed that has occurred. Well, one of the Rutgers cheerleaders just took out the Temple Owl in and the end zone. Why. That's why the crowd was cheering. There he is. Look at him. <laughs> Stand by for second half <laughs> hijinks. Third and goal at the 12 for the Owls. First, they have the blitz. Do they pick it up? They do. Man there. Almost picked off. Nice play by Keith Price. He came up and vied for that ball with Van Johnson. I'll tell you, you got to give credit to the offensive line because Burris is getting time. The blitz that time. You can see Rashawn Giddings come in. He gets picked up. Katana gets picked up. Pass not accurately thrown. And Price almost making it. So a field goal attempt of 38 yards here. I'm sorry, 28 yards. 28 yards. Nasty. Maston four for four from this distance. He's eight of 12 on the season from the right hash. Placement put down, block, got a low kick, and we got a return by Trivet. Forget it. He Forget will it. go for six. Curtis Trivet, the block field goal. That's wait, come on back, Curtis. Turnaround for the Rector Scarlet Knights. It covers 79 yards. He's going to milk that, isn't he? 79 yards, Trivet, the block field goal. He better come back. He's got to go back on defense pretty soon. What a play. That is a 10-point turnaround. You bet. The three that Temple didn't get. Good snap, good hold. The kick is up. Where does Trivet come from? It's a low. Oh, there it was. Number on the number 23 got it. Washington, Washington. on the right side. Super job. Oh, my. Washington with a great block. Trivet picks it up and takes it down. The Rutgers now with a chance to go ahead by seven. What a huge play. The board. Backs on the extra point. Again, a 28-yard attempted field goal for the three-point lead. At the right side, he comes outside. Washington gets his hands on it, and Trivet, he's just, he's just watching. Picks it up right in his hands, and he takes it about 80 yards. Second touchdown this season for Trivet. He returned, as we mentioned earlier, an IMT for six against Kent earlier this year. Well, that is a huge oh, turnaround. A huge turnaround. It's a 10-point swing at the 22-second mark. We're going to give it an 80-yard call. Officially, 80 yards on that return. So Ron Dickerson's task at halftime, certainly the beneficiary right there, Trivet the record. For Temple, they'll have to regroup. Only down a touchdown as they tried to go up by three going into the half. It's a huge play. They're with us here at halftime from Rutgers Stadium. Took a look back at last week in the Big East Conference. Big East quiz, stats and highlights, and we've got some terrific highlights coming your way. And that was a good looking drive, too, by the Owls. They had a big 42 yard field goal, and a big 42 yard pass play to Baxter. And set them up in good field position. I have to wonder how that will affect Temple in at halftime in the locker room. They were going to go in with a three-point lead, but now they're down by seven, a 10-point swing. Time on the clock remaining, 22 seconds. Raphael Mack brings it back, across about the 32, and a lot of hitting going on down there. Ryan Sheridan, number 43, with the tackle. So now with 17 seconds left here in the half, you have to wonder what Rutgers, uh, what Temple will do not in great field position, don't have a lot of chance to do things here. They might try some safe plays, see if they can get some yardage. Safe plays, but I mean like some draws and screens. They have one timeout left. Maybe just take it in. Well, let's see what they do. They sent Van Johnson to the top of your screen and Mike Baxter to the bottom and with the tight end flexed to the top. Gonna throw it. 
Good pass protection. Ferris and out pattern. Catch by Baxter. And they say it was out of bounds at the 47. Well, they got a good good conference by the officials that time. The deer one looked downfield at the far official, and the far official said no good. Burris got hammered on that play. He ended up on the ground after the play. Temple's backup is Pat Bonner, who has not seen any action this now, year. The inbounds. Can't quite see, but here we'll see. Out of bounds. So second down from the 36. 13 seconds to go. Going to run it. A good block on the corner by Morris as Gaddy runs out of bounds. At the 44-yard line, it's close to a first down. Good you know, block by Morris. You almost try a Hail Mary here now. What do you have to lose? Nine seconds, sure. He's got the arm, I'll guarantee you that. See if he can do a Doug Flutie slash Cordell Stewart. The Temple 44. That was good enough for first down. I was at the 44th Temple. You know, they always practice that Big Ben play during a game, and they're sending out the three wide receivers at the top of the screen. In practice, they always try, but it never has the intensity that it has That's in right. a game. That's why it often it can work in a game when it doesn't in practice. Holbreth, Johnson, and Mike Williams, top of your screen. Pass protection there, Burris is flushed out. Now he's gonna run it. Best bet as he gets out at the 39 with oh, one my. second to go. What a well. break. So they get a chance of hanging up high again. You know, I was watching the clock normally, you know, and you don't want to put it on a clock operator, but normally that the home stadium goes, well, they don't quite click it off right. They just, you know, have but they gave him a second now, just throw it in the end zone. Absolutely. But they're gonna try they're gonna try a long field goal, 57 yards. The long this year for Maston is 44. You know, they do run fakes also, but I think if they were gonna run a fake, they would just run an offensive play. 57 yards. Wow. With the win. Oh, McAlee hit it well. Why wow, hooked it? I'll tell you what, he got a lot of leg on that. 30 minutes complete and a very entertaining first half of football here at the Scataway, New Jersey's Rutgers Stadium. Rutgers leads it 21 to 14. Both quarterbacks, a couple running backs on fire. We'll be back with our halftime activities after these words from our local station. Back here at Rutgers Stadium, halftime. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you. Temple Owls and the Scarlet Knights. A good ball game. 21-14, the score after the first 30 minutes of action. And Dave Jennings, this has been a very entertaining first half. You've seen a lot with uh, Rutgers being able to run the ball, but the big surprise, Temple's been able to run the ball. Temple run, has run the ball very well. You have to give credit to their offensive line because they are opening up some holes for Gaddy, and he has uh, done some very positive things, so that is a surprise. And then, of course, the big thing at the end of the half is the, the block field goal for the return. It could be a three-point three lead for Temple. Indeed, it could be. What are uh, your thoughts on Terrell Willis? The fact that he's in there now pretty much carrying the load for Rutgers with Presley out. What are your thoughts on his first you half? You know, we talked to Doug Graber yesterday. We said he, he challenged him. He told him, you got to pick it up. He's over 100 yards, so he's done the job. You have to give him a lot of credit also. Lucas also has played well, too. At one point, he was uh, he had one stretch where he was 5 for 5, so he's throwing the ball with authority also. And he's throwing it, of course, to Marco Battaglia, doing a nice job finding him. All right, let's take a look at some of the first half highlights. There were many. We'll start with the scoring play that put Rutgers on top. Lucas to Jason Curry. Again, going out of the tight formation, finding the backup tight end. He had one or two guys at Bridges on the left, 32, or Curry, and he found them nicely. Temple's offsides on the kickoff, and then a personal foul late in that drive really helped set that up. And then Burris hits Cook to tie it at 7-7. Again, a similar type of play, had a receiver outside, but he also found Cook inside for the touch. Temple was three for three on third downs in that drive, and Burris went six for seven, 52 yards. Gaddy had a big run in this series, and Johnson with the score to make it 14-7 Temple. Same play on the other side, uh, this time not the tight end, but Johnson the receiver. Johnson had a big 20-yard gain on a second and 13. Willis, a one-yard run. Willis caps off a great drive. He had 62 yards in this possession. He had gone out the play before, got his breath back, and then uh, 
uh, came back in and ran it for the touchdown. Now here you think Temple's going up by three points end of the first half. But watch the bottom of your screen. Washington does not get blocked. He lays out beautifully, just lays out, gets the ball, and a nice fortuitous bounce right into Tribbett at the 20. I don't think anybody's catching him. Not at all. He will go the distance. He went 80 yards. He, he went 80 yards, but look at this. 80, 90, 110. <laughs> 120. Beat well, the Canadian League distance, right? <laughs> he, he will be back for the second half. <laughs> we think. All right, numbers. Rushing Rutgers with 121, but don't discount the 89 by Temple. No, and, and you look down at the bottom, the return yards includes that interception return, but a, a pretty even ball game. Rutgers, 120 yards rushing, but look at that passing for Temple, 126, but also 89 yards rushing for Temple. They averaged 78 yards a game. They're already in the first half, 11 yards over that. That's right, and per carry, it was only 2.2 a pop. That was not impressive. They've uh, beaten that pretty big this afternoon. Quarterback comparison, a good day for both gentlemen. 11 for 15, a buck 26. No interceptions for either guy. 7 for 9, 57 yards for Lufus. Yeah, we knew Burris had the arm. We saw it early, and he's had a, he has had a very good year this year, Lucas matching him. Other action around college football this afternoon. Florida State starting to pull away from Georgia Tech. That's some ACC action. Virginia leading Duke 17-14. Duke trying to rebound after getting hammered last week by Florida State. Penn State just scored to make it 14-7. That's late in the second period at Bloomington, Indiana. Mississippi State on top of a not a very good Arkansas club right now in the Southeast Conference. That coming up, Kentucky and Vanderbilt. Florida looking at big postseason action. Still to come in the uh, Big Ten. Purdue has two ties on its hands this season, and they lead Michigan, or trail Michigan. And Clemson over North Carolina. Here's uh, the scoring recap from the first half here. It was Jason Curry, his second catch of the season. Both of them touchdowns, 14-7-7-0. And then 7-7 seven, seven the scores. P.J. Cook scores for the Owls. For P.J., touchdown number five on the season. Johnson from Burris, an impressive drive that went nine plays, 60 yards, and covered 434. Owls on top. And then... Rutgers comes back to tie an impressive drive for themselves, 83 yards, covering four minutes and 20 seconds. And the 10-point swing right here is Temple going for a field goal, a 28-yard field goal attempt that was blocked. Trippett took it back 80 yards to take a 21-14 lead. Coming up, Temple will get the ball to start this second half. And Dave Jennings, what do we look for from the Temple Owls? Well, I think more of the same here in the second half. They ran the ball nicely in the first half. They controlled the line of scrimmage. And in order for Burris to be even more successful, if he can run the football, get Rutgers back on their heels so they can have to play the run, it will help him out a lot. Now, one thing that could be a factor here is we see, the, is see Rutgers uh, see some of their fans here. One thing that could be a factor here in the third and fourth periods in the second half, the sun. The sun a definite factor because it's casting shadows from the right side. So any team that's going from right to left looking back into the sun receiver-wise. So it could be a factor. Very yeah, good first half of football yeah. here at that, Rutgers that, Stadium. That, that, that. Rutgers <laughs> coming in. About an 18-point favorite. Love to have been in to hear what Ron Dickerson had to tell his club because emotionally the Owls are on a high on that last drive. They got a 42-yard completion to Mark Baxter to set him up first and 10 at the 15. He got a couple of yards down to the 11 and then went for a 28-yard field goal in the final seconds on a third and goal and it returned 80 yards after the block. You know, sometimes teams that aren't winning football teams find a way, in a sense, to give the ball back to the other team. And right there at the end of the first half, Temple having a chance to go ahead by three, but the block field goal. Now here on this kickoff, again, Temple looking up into that sun, so we'll see how it has an effect, if it does, on Frederick. Kukowski getting it teed up. Frederick, Frederick on the left and Tom Indio on the right. See that sun, see how they're looking, the long shadows. 
Frederick with a good return and a 26 yarder. And we're underway. Second half. Jeff Frederick will get a chance, catches it at the five. Finds the wall. A couple of good blocks, and he hammers up to the 20, and all kinds of collisions there. Well, Greg Ascalise, who was a linebacker, he had a heck of a block that time. For Temple. Wow. Greg number 18 and Larry Walding also in on that block, too. Offensive line has been the key this afternoon. Player hurt for Rutgers on the field right there. Paul Rivers. Paul's a freshman defensive back out of Oxen Hill, Maryland. Six one one nine. He really took a pop. On that kickoff, they don't call it suicide squad for nothing. Bright sunny day here at Rutgers. Every time they move the kickoff back five yards, there are more returns and more injuries. You're mm -hmm. seeing in the National Football League this year, they move the kickoff point back to the 30-yard line. So fewer touchbacks, more returns, more collisions, more injuries. I'll tell you what, it takes big-time courage to go down there, kickoff coverage consistent basis. Owls will put in play from their own 21. And Johnson and Mark Baxter split out to the top of your screen. DJ Cook the tight end at the bottom. Sid Morris wants Gaddy the back and Gaddy gets the call to start the second half. And he tried to flex outside, run out of bounds. Good play by 97. He didn't make contact. Shane Spells chased him down from the backside. Yeah, Shane Spells chasing down to Mark Washington. The safety came up. Spells will come from the left, will come from the side. He's number 97. You see him chasing, and then you watch 23. That's Washington come up. And Gaddy will say, well, I think I'll just take it outside. There's Washington. You know, another player coming in here. Spalding Price. There. Spalding, who's Spalding taking the place of Sneathan here in the uh, second half. They lose five on the play, ball back at the 16-yard line. The draw opens up big time for Gaddy to the 20, to the corner, can't get there, fine tackle. Give me a ball, Curtis give me a ball, Trivet give me a ball. gets it done for the Scarlet Knights. Trivet coming up from his cornerback position and that time Spalding lined up on the left side. He, he rushed way outside, and that's why on the delay, Gaddy ran inside of where Spalding was. But still, third down play, third and long. Gaddy ran a long way to pick up three. On the day, 71 yards for Gaddy, and he's been tackled five times for losses. Temple had, at one stretch, was perfect five for five on third down conversions. First straight back, screen, get Baxter. Got some block game, 25, that'll do it. Rutgers reacted well to that. You know, that screen, apart. yeah, the screen happened too fast because the defensive line had an opportunity to respond backwards. They were right now. You see this line rushing, but it's a quick pass. So some of these guys just turn around. See them all turn around. You see number 91, Bryant, get right in there. The other thing, too, Baxter not knowing that the line didn't have far to go. If he had broken it to the outside, he would have had more room. Here's the point. John Shea. Funderburg fair catch at the 41. 34-yard punt by John Shea, who is averaging close to 38 yards per punt. Got a timeout on the field. 13.23 to go here in the third period. Good ball game. Rutgers leads Temple. By the score of 21 to 14, we'll be back after these messages. The second half of today's Big East football telecast is brought to you by Motorola Pagers for the messages you can't afford to miss. And by Molson Ice from Canada, the land where ice was born. Welcome back, everybody. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you at Rutgers Stadium. 21-14, Knights over the Owls. Rutgers has won the last three games in overwhelming fashion. 41-0, 35-10, and 62-zip. And today, locked up in a pretty good one. 
Ray Lucas from the 41, some play action. Rose short to Battaglia, to the 50, got a block. 45, stays in bounds, delivers a blow and catches a big one. Battaglia knocked out of bounds, they're gonna spot it at the Temple 45. Oh, good play action to the right that time for Willis, and then he rolls out. Lucas does to his left side. Kennedy pulling out in front of him, the guard. You see Kennedy, 66, pulling out in front. Battaglia with a crossing pattern. I'm sorry, just releases outside. No one there. Corey Green playing him pretty deep. The strong safety should be up a little more closely. And it's a first down for this Scarlet Knights. Battaglia, four catches, 45 yards. He averages five catches per game. Harper goes to the top of the screen for record. Lucas, to give it to Terrell Willis. Big hole into the secondary. Pulled down from behind by number 41, Allen Jackson. And I think you said something in the first uh, half about Bridges earning his money. He leads up into the hole, 32 in red, and just nails Andrew Brown, who is a middle linebacker. He wears number 55 in white. You'll see it right there. And there's a nice hole for Ter Terrell Willis. Rolls down to the 30, picks up 15. Willis's average per carry continues to grow. I told you he'll be tired after this game. No question. But a happy tired, I'm sure. <laughs> Spread out to the right. Look is throwing. And off the pad, should have caught it. Funderburk at the 18. Boy, Lucas threw a fastball that time at Funderburk who's the second leading receiver for the Scarlet Knights. Should have caught that one if he gets the hands One out. of your pet peeves. Absolutely. Coming up as part of Molson's sponsorship of Big East Football, we will be selecting the Molson Ice player of the game later on in this telecast. He's looking back into the sun, but again, something you talk about often, catch the ball in your hands, don't let it hit your chest. Catch it in your hands, bring it into your chest, but don't let it smack against your chest and then try to smother it. Tough way to earn a living that way. Second and 10 at the 30. 21-14 Rutgers, 12-40 to go third period. Draw to Willis. Adds to his yardage again. Down to about the 21-yard line. It'll be just short of a first down. It's averaging close to eight yards a pop. You get him up close to 130 yards, and they're right at 130 for the game this afternoon takes it on the right side and Willis you know some running backs they get better as you give them the ball more Bridges again leading up cuts it inside some running you know here at Rutgers with Presley and Willis alternating maybe he hasn't gotten into the groove this year because he hasn't had the year that he had last year last year 13 touchdown runs this year only two now fourth in the conference 78 yards per game Willis gets the call got the first down Ted McDuffie, number 38, with a tackle for Temple, but another first down for Rutgers. Rutgers has done so far here in the second half what they wanted to do. They got a three and out on their defensive series, took the ball, and then marching it right downfield. Again, you have to wonder what kind of an effect on Temple, that blocked field goal for a touchdown for Rutgers had at the end of the first half. Temple was... Attempting a 28-yard field goal. Try to take a 17-14 lead. It was blocked by Washington. Trivet took it 80 yards for the score. First and 10 at the tip of 20. Delay to Willis. And boy, took one in the chops. Johnstone slowed him up, and yeah, then he paid for it at the end. That was a rarity seeing uh, Johnstone, Lance Johnstone, number 54, right there in the middle of your screen. You'll see him fill in from the left side. This is a tackle here. Something. Watch this right here. Has his arms around him, but Willis does a good job, and then smack right in the face. Corey Green finished him off. A few times you see that young man miss a tackle. Second down in five. 15. Sprint out right side. Harper let it get to his chest. Another break for Temple. You know, I wonder if, if they're having trouble over that side looking back into the sun. At, now, again, he came into his chest. He probably turned before he had control of the ball. You'll see it right here. Just a quick pass. Follow it in. He's got it. Now, look. See him turn. Harper turned before he had it. Lucas saying, come on, you got to catch those. You hurt my stats. That's right. I did my part. You do yours. What is this? 
Two for four, third down situations. Second in the conference to Syracuse. Get a big play here. Bridges goes in motion. Got a man overthrew Bataglia and he took a lick from McWilliams at the two. Yeah, that could almost have been a penalty against McWilliams, an unneeded hit right there. But the pass is very highly thrown, so that time Bataglia open. Just releases on the right side, just straight down the seam. Lucas has him, but see how high it is. Now watch the shot here. Unneeded shot here at the end. Took you, a two and a half step uh, you, you run don't need, You don't need that. So DeBorg, 32 yard attempt coming up. Eddie DeBorg from this distance is two for three. He's four for eight on the season. Good. So Eddie DeBoer, 32 yard field goal. Tax on three more for Rutgers. It's 24 14 with 10 47 to go in the third period. We'll be back to Rutgers Stadium after these words from our local stations. Eddie DeBorg has added three points for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and the Knights lead it 24 14 with 10 47 to go. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with you in the Big East Football Conference Game of the Week. One axiom in, in, in football is how well you come out to start the third quarter. And Rutgers has started off very strongly, and they've got a, a lead here they'd like to build on. Sure did, because Temple did a three and out to open the quarter. Frederick from a one, finds a hole, another penalty flag, and he gets up to about the 27-yard line, a penalty flag thrown back around the 15. Yep, T Troy Buccino, who's a linebacker, he wears number 59, he grabbed and tackled, and it's a hold against Temple. They'll bring it back. Hold on the kickoff return. I'll take it back to about the nine yard line. Holding on the return team. During the return, the penalty will be assessed from the spot of the foul, half the distance to the goal, first down. Let's see if we can pick this up, number 59. Top of your screen, you can see him hold. And you tackle them right there. He goes out of your screen now, but that's where the hold was. That's a big penalty again. Worst starting point of the afternoon for the Owls from the nine. Down 24 14. Take the delay. Burks throwing. Show almost picked off. He went for Baxter. The safety came over. Washington came over to age Tribbett. Washington was all over that, and he thought he had hawked an interception. Well, you'll see Burris's view on this. Burris going to drop back. Play action, which works because they've run the ball so well, and it slowed down the rush. Now watch Washington come right here. Where is it? He doesn't have it. He thought he had it. Did you notice the play action that time worked out very nicely for Temple because when they went with the play action, Rutgers stopped Rutgers' rush. Temple's had two long scoring drives, one of 74, one of 60. They'll need a longer one in this one. A little offside, top of your screen. Catano got in there very quickly, delivery to Crook. And he's run out of bounds at the 12. Looked like Catano was offside, but no, no flag. We've seen it about 10 times today. Rutgers jumping on the voice inflection of Burris. Sneathan's back in the game. There's Catano, number 80. Sneathan, number 89, back in the game. You'll see a jump here. You go on the movement of the ball, not on the sound of the quarterback's voice, and he's gotten them about 10 times today, about two penalties. Drives a, a defensive coach crazy. Watch the ball. Don't listen to the voice. Pick There's Stephen. Pick up just uh, three yards on that play. Third and seven, Burris rolling out to get away from pressure. Got a man on the sideline. Dotson got his hands on it at the 43 and dropped it. Might have been out of bounds anyway. Uh, it would have definitely been out of bounds. A little tough when you're rolling to your left and you're a right-handed quarterback to throw down that left sideline. The ball will drift out of bounds. So two, three and outs for the Rutgers defense. So the Rutgers defense is held and good opportunity now to go after John Shea who will be two yards deep in his own end zone. And they've got eight guys inside. They're singling up the outside 
guy, so Shea gets a beauty. High spiraling jab to about the 48. Missed tackle at the 28 by Raphael Mack, but Thunderberg is brought down at the Temple 45-yard line. 41-yard punt, 8-yard return, 10-16 to go. We'll be back after these messages. Welcome back, everybody, to Rutgers Stadium. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings. Open it up on the Rutgers sideline, 24-14, Scarlet Heights. Doug Graber's club, 10-point cushion right now. Now look at him. You can never tell from looking at the head coach whether the team's ahead or behind. If you look at just about every coach, you'd think they were behind by two touchdowns. Been a great afternoon for Terrell Willis. Locus will go from the gun up by 10. Locus had two drops in a misfire last time, and Harper falls down at the 38. Did he pull a muscle? I think he did. And he ran away from his blockers, too. The blockers went left. He I, went right. I got to believe he pulled a hamstring. Yeah. Did you see him go down? I Looked didn't like hear he any was... gunshot, but I tell you what, he, he went Look down like... Him. Yeah, he's in pain. This has happened to me. Look at him. See you holding the right hamstring? Goes in motion, then comes back underneath. <clears throat> there he is, number 12, Harper. Now watch him as he goes. He's in the open field. Now watch here. Oh, he just goes down. But those, of course, happen on your training runs, right? Please put nine minutes, 59 seconds on the clock. Nine, five, nine. You know, I was doing some sprints once, one summer at Giant Stadium, getting ready Back for here. camp. You can see him here limping off. It's the only time I ever pulled a muscle. It, I pulled my left hamstring. I felt like I was shot. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the suddenness of it, it was, scares the heck out exactly, of me, Exactly. Right? It was just like somebody shot me, and here's Harper. First and last time I ever pulled a hamstring. Just the freshman came into today's action. Two touchdowns, 15 catches. Got it down to the 38 yard. He picked up seven. Big game this afternoon. Huh? Very important game nationally and, of course, in the Big East as they go for the top of the Big East. Syracuse hosting Miami. Check your local listings on that. Syracuse, big underdog in that game. Second and three from the 38. Quick count. Willis finds the corner, then finds it, closed up. He's quick, but he's not that quick. Singleton fought off a good block from Battaglia that time to make the stop. Jason Davis made a nice play, too, number 35. He plays defensive end. You know, it's funny, you see in college some of the numbers, that's a defensive end. You'd think that'd be a defensive back or running back because they are short of the first down by a good yard. To game two, third down and one. Willis approaching 150 yards on the afternoon. He gets the call. He gets the first down and more. Down to the 24-yard line. Robert McWilliams saves further damage, but a lot of credit to that offensive line. Quick hitter behind Damon and Kareem Williams and John Bleich. Very rarely do you see a tight formation open up a big hole inside. But the three guys in the backfield leading up Bridges and also number 87 has Charles Woolridge. And the safeties have to come up to make the stop. And right now Willis right out of buck 5-0. Temple linebackers Brown and Perry are going to see West Bridges in their nightmares tonight. Bridges, they reward him, they fake it in that side of Willis. Decent block on the corner by number 15, Jonathan Gibbs, before McDuffie runs him out of bounds. Boy, the little freeze option, the, the inside fake, and there's a penalty on the field. But this is a good job by Lucas. He'll turn around, fake inside the bridge. Now just hold for a second and then toss outside. Now watch Gibbs left side 15 with a good block by the right receiver downfield. And we have a penalty coming in. Added on to this one. Added on to this play. They're talking about it. Terry Monk leading his crew through the adjudication. Dead ball, personal foul. Yes, the defense, half the distance to the goal, penalty, first down. Second time, Ron Dickerson's had a personal foul at this end of the field. And Jason Davis getting what for, that, that extra piling on can kill you. McWilliams was called for that first time Rutgers had the ball. You know, we've only played six minutes and about 20 seconds here in the second half, but this looks like a different Temple team than we saw in the first half. 
they're back on their heels and not playing with the same excitement and emotion that we saw the first half. First and goal at the seventh. Tagley in motion. Willis gets the call, cuts it up, and spins to the five. Willis. Down here, the yards get tougher. A lot of blocking, very important. You are your defensive lineman. You take on the blocks. You push the guys off. Little hand of the face mask there. Game of two, second and goal. Stan Parrish is the offensive coordinator for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, and here he is. In the glasses, Stanley. Diagramming a touchdown play. The wide side of the field, bottom of your screen, and Funderburg. Tackler coming in motion. They throw that way. Ball back down, and oh, Lucas had it back in his hands. And you hear somebody say, Ray, Ray, Ray. I don't know why Lucas wanted to get back in John Stone's face. I think when he saw it was John Stone, he said, well, maybe I better not. You know, he could have caught this. It would have been a legal right. reception. Absolutely. I think they're trying to go to Bataglia right here, 81. See, they're going to Bataglia. The big guy, is that Lloyd? I think 96 That's got it. Lloyd. T. Lang Lloyd got uh, a piece of that. 36 and 94, so that would be Terry. Wisely, he turns away. And Singleton. You see, Lucas, he, he looked at John Stone, he said, oh, I guess not. I heard somebody, I think somebody on that offensive line said, Ray, Ray, Ray. That's all you need, your quarterback doing something stupid like that, getting run out of the game. Trips formation, bottom of the screen, third goal. The rollout, the throw, touchdown Rutgers. Jonathan Gibbs with the score. For Jonathan Gibbs, his first score of the season. And Rutgers with a 30 to 14 lead with 7.40 to go, third period. You know, when Lucas rolls out, he's a weapon himself and then he can run. It puts a lot of pressure on your force people. Do you come up and play him or do you play the wide receiver? So he just rolls out to his left and finds Gibbs in the corner. Both gets across right inside the pylon for the touchdown. Second TD pass of the day for Ray Lucas. Gives him 11 on the season. The Borg for the point after. And it's good. Nice hold by Robert Higgins. Ouch. Getting <laughs> a little gritty with that cannon. They got a lot of ammunition today. Lucas again just rolling out to his left. Now he can do one of two things here. He can run. Putting a lot of pressure on those secondary people, or he can throw it inside. Wide open Gibbs. When you're open by a yard down at the goal line, you're wide open. Gibbs, you can see him here just running an out pattern. A little bit of a pick there. Nice little pick there by Chris Hutton, who wears number nine in red for Rutgers. Catches it every time, doesn't he? <laughs> So the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, four straight scores on the Temple Isles. It's 31-14. Waiting for them to sneak in a replay where they show a drop after like five, five Everybody of those catches. Everybody on up to you, baby. At home, Merlin, baby. Yeah. Merlin. I always love guys that feel I like talking. Saying hello to everybody. Everybody emulating Florida State and Miami. Of course, those guys won in 92. 31-14. Last time Temple beat Rutgers was November 17 of 1990 in a barn burner 29-22. And they'll have to do some uh, comeback right now to get back into this game down by 17. Frederick will take it at the four. Straight up the middle and trip and a little more room. Ryan Sheridan makes the tackle for Rutgers. Well, if you haven't felt the momentum shift, just want to remind you, because it certainly has in this game, and a lot of that probably has to do with that 80-yard return of a blocked field goal late first half. Florida State leading Duke on top of Virginia. The Dukies have rallied to take a lead. Penn State not overwhelming Indiana, but leading nonetheless. Owls will put it in play at the 22. In reverse, we'll have to throw off the Zips it. Oh, it should have been picked off. Number 45, Keith Price had it right in his hands, and his DB coaches will say, that's why we got you on our side of the ball. Well, exactly, and you know, the thing about a defensive back, you don't get many opportunities like this. 
when you get an opportunity just playing the in cut re look see how the quarterback burst reading it all away gave it away reading the in cut price is stepping right in front should have had it. and johnson the intended receiver think about picks like that price has one on the season you don't get a heck of a lot of opportunity four man rush four backers four record Gaddy. Number 56, Rudy Smith. Hello. Well, Rudy Smith played off the blocker beautifully. Just a tech, textbook style, using your hands to throw off the blocker. Rudy Smith playing for Guarnera right now. Left side, you'll see him just stand up. Eric Johnson, see, he stands him up, uses his hands, pushes him off nicely. That's just the way you draw it up. Smith is using his hands, pushing him away. Good job. Temple, after going five for five on third down, has missed on its last four opportunities. Gaddy in motion. Burks, flush. Throws across his body. Van Johnson, first down and more. Knocked down at the Temple 47 first down owls. Kelly and Washington finished that playoff, but Burris showing some ability as he floated to his left and threw behind him. Toughest pass to throw, rolling to the side away from your throwing arm here. Burris rolling out to his left, being flushed out, and then tossing it back nicely as the receiver's running across away from him. Very tough play. Good job by Johnson as well as Burris. And after going two times, three and out, they've got a first down here. First one in the second half. Al's down 31-14, 6.25 remaining third period here at Rutgers Stadium. Burris going to throw again. Quick look at Sid Morse, and so does Rutgers. Kitano with some help from Trivet. There you have it. Seven plays. Covering 45 yards and 336 off the clock. And a personal foul that uh, set up Rutgers inside the 10. One of the big plays in that drive. Second down and nine now. At the 48, Morrison motion. And the right tackle, number 78, that's Eric Johnson. If he had stayed still, they could have gotten Rutgers for being offside. And you'd have to think they're aware of this because Rutgers has jumped off about 10 times today. Dead ball foul, false start. On the offense, remain second down. See, Sneathan's opposite Johnson. Sneathan's gonna jump. He's 89 right down here at the bottom. And Johnson moves. Hmm. False start. Well, yeah, he's got to keep it from totally unraveling here. It's second and long. Second and 14 from the 43. That's his four-man front. Barris flushed. Throws back across his body to Kanzaner at the 50. Kanzaner to the Rutgers 47-yard line. Washington and Giddings bring him down. One thing being ahead by 17 points, or from Temple's point of view, being behind, it's almost taking their running game out of the ball game right now, and Rutgers knows they're going to be passing just about every down. Good first half, running the ball for Ron Dickerson's crew. But that has changed. They picked up 87 yards on the ground. Pretty significant, since this is not a great running team. Averaging just... 78 yards on the ground and last in the conference. Third down and four. Barris Morris close to the first down. Thomas Kelly with the hit. Boy, if, if Kelly could have wrapped him up, it would have been short of a first down. Looks like they got it. But I think that uh, he was able to get across Morris meeting, a couple of 21s meeting, and they got the first down. Kelly coming up. Morris. A blitz that time. You see the but here comes Catano. A couple guys inside. Burris releases it quickly now. Here Morris has it. Kelly's got it. See where he hits him? Hits him at the 45. But then Morris stretches across to the 43 for the first. Morris very dependable. Doesn't get a lot of yardage, but he's got five catches for 27 yards. He's the leading receiver for the out. Danny back to the run. Nowhere to go. 43 is there. Brian Sheridan. A lot of friends too. 
Next week is a wild card weekend for the Big East Caravan. We will be somewhere near you. Check your local listings. Game time at 12 noon. And we will choose from one of these. Syracuse at BC. Major bowl implications there. Rutgers at Virginia Tech. Both of those clubs also looking at bowls. West Virginia improving. And Miami takes on Pitt. Second down and eight for the 3.30 to go. Third quarter. 31-14 Rutgers. Barrett sprint out. To his left under pressure. Gets rid of it. Got a man there, but he's out of bounds. It's Van Johnson. Boy, did you see the pressure that time? Look at Swinger sitting down. Swinger and also Steven. Brother. See, they know that he is going to be passing quite a bit, so there's a lot of lot more aggressive pass rushing here than was in the first half. And kind of tough to throw the ball accurately when you're being buried under about 500 pounds, 600 pounds of football players. Yeah, they tried to get him out of harm's way with the sprint out there. He's way to roll out and it didn't work. Third and eight now. Off speed. His elbow is pretty much back to 100%. The right elbow really limited his play two weeks ago at Boston College. They have gotten him off sides. Burris, decent protection. Penalty flag is down. Two up for down. Burris steps inside. Wow, he did a nice job to get close to first down. He'll be short. Bryant brought him down, but two penalty flags are down. If he had gotten a little bit closer, you'd almost think they'd uh, refuse the penalty and go for it on fourth. But Keith Bryant jumping across again. You know, they just, as a defense, here he is right there. Boink. Can't get back. So they'll accept the penalty. Outside, defense. See, they're only about a yard and a foot short of a first down. I wonder if they're thinking about refusing the penalty. I would think they would accept it. Sure. They can make third, third and about give, three. Give them two plays to get the yardage. You bet. Offside on the defense. Five yard penalty for the previous spot. Remains third down. Ball is very close to the 37 yard line. Got to get down just inside the 33. You gonna crank it? Third and a long three. Doug Graber's club up 31-7. Clock rolling, approaching the three-minute mark in the third period. Good to have you with us, Dave Sims and Dave Jennings. Biggie's caravan in Seattle, New Jersey. Third and long three. Morse and Getty in the offset eye. Sid Morse, no way, buddy. You know, Bruce Spalding with the tackle. That's a strange call, but you have to think. Now, they sent the punt team on the field. What are they doing? Now, they do run fakes, but I, I would think running that play on third down, they probably were going to go, go, you know, use two downs to get it. But nothing up the middle. Just nothing. Now, they, they, they do run fakes out of this formation. You can see the guy right up here behind the center. Larry Walding, throw it, got it. Oh, what a hit! And McWilliams breaks the tackle. He got the first down. He got crushed. Larry Walding, a walk-on with the completion is now three for four. Now, Walding comes up right behind center. He wears number seven, just stands up and finds a guy. Bang. On a McWilliams. Pop, pop pass to Robert McWilliams. Well, what a... Good job by McWilliams to hold on to it because he was nailed. Spun out of the tackle, too. Ball's at the 31. Larry Walding, a great story, a walk-on, and hoping, hoping to be back with the Owls next year. Actually, he will be. He's a picture junior. Loves Temple and loves Ron Dickerson. Check that. Burris back. And he throws to P.J. Cook. E.J. delivers a blow. Knocked out of bounds at the 24. Ball, 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 Sheridan ball, ball, and Ribbit on the tackle. Well, that little fake punt there could be a little bit of a turning point here in this ball game if they go down to score. Well, again, I was a little surprised on that third down running the football into the line. Mm -hmm. I think they just keep Burris out there and run a fourth down play. 
Walding has uh, executed that fake a couple of times this season for P.J. Cook. Four catches, 22 yards. Gives him 27 catches. Got a touchdown earlier. Now second and four to 25. A delayed and Gaddy with a little bit of room. Pushes forward to about the 21. Team spells Bruce Spalding. Give them credit for the tackle. Hmm. Look at Clemson. That is a major surprise in the ACC. Clemson not having a good year. They're trying to turn things around. Michigan holding off Purdue. Michigan loses that game. They'll drop out of the top 25. Florida big over Southern Miss. Going to measure it for the first down. Mississippi State by a touchdown. And now our measurement. First down, Temple. So this drive continues. It began back at the Temple 22. 13th play coming up. So Larry Walding with the big play so far. The fake, fake punt. Pass to Robert McWilliams and Temple in business. Trying to get back into this ball game and cut into this 17-point deficit with the clock running. <laughs> Offensive line, Clark, Bowen, Berger, Summerday, and Johnson a surprise today because they've opened up some running room for Juan Gaddy and company. Colbert in motion. Burris, pump fake, he slips, delivers in the ends, and Colbert is there, and knocked down. Nicely done by Curtis Trivet. You know, it looked like P.J. Cook was wide open down the seam. Let's take a look at that and see if Cook will be on the left side of your screen. Is open. There's Cook, 85. He goes, to, he beats Giddings, but Burris comes here to the man who's covered. Now let's see from another angle. Watch 85, right side of your screen. You'll see him pump the stop here. And now look at not wide open, but he was there. Yeah, he was. Safety coming over with a late hit. They may come back to that at some point, maybe even here. They run it this time. Colbert, nice little run as he gets down to the 16. Stopped by Bruce Spalding, who's come off the bench to make a big contribution for Rutgers. Just thinking ahead on this third down play. If they don't make it, will they kick the field goal here? I have a feeling they field goal will give them a two-touchdown deficit. Let's think about this third down play. At this point, you need you do need points. Yep. Touchdown would, would help even better to get it down to 10, no question. They send Johnson and Kanzader top of your screen on this 15th play of the drive. Colbert in motion with Morse remaining. Straight back to throw. Luke there. Oh, P.J. Cook right through his hands, and Catano yes. says he should have had it. That at the 10-yard line. Well, Cook is the guy who was open on that previous play. They didn't get it to him, so let's watch him here and see if Catano, again, Cook lined up right here, just goes down the seam. He's got Catano, now just turns. Kind of just just threw it behind him, exactly. Because he, hit, see him here? There's yeah. momentum, and, and there was another receiver right there. Colbert made a bid for that play. So they bring in Baxter and Gaddy. And they will go for it on fourth down. They want seven, they don't want three. They have to get to the six, uh, the 11 yard line. Temple, nine for 17 on fourth down. Here we go, throw it inside, behind Gaddy, and Rutgers takes over. And the pressure made it happen, and Burris threw it behind the intended receiver, Juan Gaddy. Big stand for Rutgers. They kind of ran out of time. The play clock was running down to about two seconds. The Burris had to get this off quickly. Pressure up the middle, so he's got to throw it. It's a little bit short. Gaddy can't pull it in. Don't think he would have had the first down anyway. Yep. As Price was up there to make the play. So with 11 seconds to go here in the third quarter, Rutgers takes over. Big changeover right there as they shoot the field goal. Willis, try to break it. Runs through a tackle by McWilliams. And that should be it for the third quarter. And indeed it is. 
Scarlet Knights put up 10 points in that third quarter and shut out the Owls. It's 31-14, 45 minutes complete. We'll be back to Rutgers Stadium after these words from our local station. What a good game here at Rutgers Stadium. Dave Sims and Dave Jennings with 31-14, Rutgers leading. And Rutgers Scarlet Knights taking over after holding on a long drive by the Temple Owls. 16 plays, 62 yards, it took 7.29 off the clock. Make that 6.29 off the clock. And the Owls come away with no score. Well, what a difference this second half has been for Temple. In the first half, they moved the ball well. Second half, except for that last drive, they've had problems. The Scarlet Knights, first play, fourth quarter. Three, 24. Willis to the corner, and he got the first down. McWilliams with the tackle. I think McWilliams is there because it could have been more. Willis has answered the question here today. Could he take the load with Presley out? He certainly has. He's taking a little pressure off of Lucas, too, because Lucas, again, they feel like he's 100%, but he's come back from that injury in the Miami game. He didn't throw all of the week after the Boston College game when they had a bye week. Ball's at the 27-yard line. Funderburg in motion. Get it to Willis as they go for the corner. He cuts it back up to the 36-yard line. Move the pile real well. Alan Jackson, Andrew Brown, they make the tackle for Temple. Through three quarters, the numbers. The time of possession. 25-33, the big turnover though. We call a block field goal a turnover. Don't know if we do, that's just a block field goal. That's in return yard. It's been a lot of other things relatively even, 284 to 265 total yards. Temple, 18 first downs, rushing the ball 95 yards, passing the ball well. But that block field goal into the first half really turned things around. Sure enough. Second and one from the 36. Play action. Lucas. The ticket himself. Slides down at the 38. Takes a hit. He wants a penalty. Because he slid feet first, and when you slide feet first, you're not supposed to hit the quarterback. And Alan Jackson came up and delivered a blow. No penalty flag. Quarterback first all the time. I'm sorry, Lucas all the time in the world just slides feet first. Although maybe that was knees first. He didn't like it. Nevertheless, he got up. He was upset. He wanted the penalty flag. Anybody that's ever played defense says, hey, tough beast, fair game anytime you can get them, right? Especially, you know, that wasn't really feet first. That was knees first. First down, first and 10 at the 38. Tom Wright, number 30, is the up back. In motion, Chris Hutt. Willis, hit down at the 40. Finished off by Andrew Brown, number 55. Initial hit there by Lance Johnstone. And Johnstone, who got hit very hard by the fullback Wright, did a good job playing off the block. Wright with a real good block on Johnstone, but he just stays after the play. Very impressed with number 54 in white. Well, he has impacted for Temple from first year. When he came in as a freshman, I remember saying, who is this guy? He was all over. Second down, college seven. The sprint out. Throwing and complete to number 15, Gibbs. First down, Rutgers, loose ball. They're saying he was down. No, there has been no signal on the field. Now they're saying down, down by contact. A lot of the officials looked at each other, but one finally came in and pointed to the ground. When they point to the ground, that means it's down by contact. Gibbs with a touchdown earlier to make it 31-14. Almost play action, and Gibbs right here finds the scene, finds the hole in the zone, turns it upfield. Oh, oh, wait, wait a second, wait a second. I think that ball is loose, folks. I think that ball was out. You hear me arguing with you. 43. Of Temple, the show blitz, they bring it. Breakfast beats Tom Wright. Pushes his way 
to about the 37-yard line. Check that. That was number 20. That was Hamlin, Damon Hamlin. We told you about him earlier. His first carry, 5'7", about 190 pounds out of Columbia, Maryland. Talking to Coach Gravius, he likes this young man. Got some quickness, has some speed. Getting an opportunity now, which I'm sure he's very happy about. 31-14, a score, Rutgers ahead, 11-22 left, fourth quarter. You bet, save Terrell Willis for the remainder of the season, which includes Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh for Rutgers. Hutton in motion. Little guy gets a carry again and cut it back right into number 43, Adrian Drones, and it took Drones for a ride a couple yards, a first down. Now to the 30-yard line for Rutgers. This, this, this is what, and again, this game isn't over. This is what the guys who don't play a lot hope for, is a game when it gets a little bit in the fourth quarter, you got a little bit of a cushion so you can start to play. Blast up the middle. Hamlin takes it. Watch after the hit. Takes Drones about three or four yards downfield. Hamlin played briefly against Penn State earlier this year, the season for the Rutgers, and that is 55-27 loss. Tries to get it outside and down to the 25-yard line. They say he was down before the ball popped loose. Fired up right now. Mm -hmm. Rutgers with 224 yards on the ground. Very impressive. Well, the Scarlet Knights fourth in the conference in rushing, averaging 174 yards per ground. That's good for 45th in the country. The Rutgers could be going in for the kill right here as we approach the 10 minute mark left in the contest. In motion is Hutt. They run it to Hamlin on nowhere. 98 makes the play for Temple. And a big one it was. Number 98 is Diego Pavia. 6'2", 245 out of Coral Gables in Florida. Coral Gables Kevin High School in Miami. Taken down by Alshamon Singleton. Lots of yards. Crowd of 26,468 here at Rutgers Stadium. Hamlin comes off the field and he gets a nice little round of applause. We look at the crowd here today on, again, a beautiful day for football. Still don't believe it's November. Yeah, right? Sprint out left, throwing short, good for the first down. I don't That's think they, this will be a mark. I think he was short, even oh, though he wasn't good, contacted. As soon catch. as he goes down, you that's bet. where they mark him. You bet. Good call, Dick Jennings, because uh, that could be a costly play. Well, he's, now, now here's the thing. If you dug Gravy, do you kick the field goal? You don't want to really be accused of running up the score if you go for it. You know, you say, well, are we running up the score by going for it? I think you go for I it. I think you just go for it and just keep running the ball. Even It's only a 17-point lead, so there is plenty of time left. Hamlin trots back on the field as Joe Graber has made his decision. Got maybe a little less than the length of the football to go. He's got to get across that line. You can see it right there. Right it up. And Hamlin in the back of the 12th play. Lucas takes it. Gets the first down. Not a bad play when you got a quarterback at 6-3 to 10. Johnstone fired in there to make the play. This is where your weight room comes into mm -hmm. play. You're just knocking people. You're just going ahead. You're going ahead. You try and get low. First down. I think we got a first down. We got measure. Terry Monk and crew will measure. Timeout for Get surged by both clubs. Ralph Saka, number three, standing alongside. Now from this Doug end, so you can see right down here where it is. Wasn't even close. Yeah. Drive continues. Always the, always the proper thing to do, though, is to measure. The officials are right there. Balls at the 19-yard line, and this a Rutgers drive that took over after Ron Dickerson's club went 62 yards, went for it on fourth and five, and didn't get it. Willis back in the game. Now Rutgers calls a timeout. A timeout on the field here at Rutgers Stadium.
8.17 to go, and Rutgers leading by 17 points on a beautiful day in early November. We'll return after these messages. All right, let's go, Rutgers! Back here at Rutgers. Let's go, Cheerleaders enjoying this right, afternoon, 38-14 for the Scarlet Knights. Remaining on the Rutgers schedule, they've got Virginia Tech next week in Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks to finish out the regular season. Temple's got West Virginia Miami both at home. From the 49, first and 10 for Temple with Cobras in motion. Blitz, the draw to Frank Carter. And Carter with a big game powering down to the 32-yard line of Rutgers. Don't know if that was an audible or if that was a call in the hope, but Rutgers comes with a blitz. By Mark Washington. And Burris and Temple react very nicely as Carter takes the ball on the delay. Here's the delay, and it's wide open over here as John Clark leading the blocking. Cook also with a block downfield. Carter, a sophomore out of Deptford, New Jersey. Temple with 134 yards running the ball over the middle. T.J. Cook catches, steps in, five, touchdown, Temple. No flags. Thomas Kelly, the free safety there in coverage, but lost his balance. And now it becomes a 38 to 20 ball game, an 18 point swing. Just right down the middle of the field, P.J. Uh, PJ Cook, who was open. Remember a little earlier he was open? They didn't go to him mm -hmm. this time. Now watch Kelly come up and flag him. Pretty much the same kind of play, too, and uh, second TD pass of the afternoon uh, for Cook. Third pass by Burris. It's behind the linebackers in front of the free safety, Kelly, who doesn't play it well. Quick touchdown by Temple. Aston's PAT is good. And now you have to wonder, will Coach Dickerson call for the onside kick here? You would think he would with a 17-point deficit, 5.56 to go. And you haven't won a Big East Conference game yet? I would certainly be looking for it. And I would imagine the Rutgers folks will have the good hands people up close. Douglas Wild Card Weekend next week on the Big East Football Conference TV Network. Join us at 12 noon. We will be at one of these games and some goodies too. Syracuse and BC. Bowl games all over that one. Rutgers at Virginia Tech. Virginia Tech thinking bowl two. West Virginia trying to get a winning season. They're on a roll. They play at Temple of Pitts at Miami. Cook on the bench, you can see him there, 85, without his helmet. D.J. Cook, two catches today for touchdowns. He's got six on the season. Burris, with three touchdown passes today, has 17 on the season. Now there's Rutgers. See, they've got all their guys up. They're, they're ready for that onside kick, and he's always fun to watch. Mm -hmm. Ball bouncing. Now Temple setting up in a normal kickoff return pattern as they have five guys on either side of the kicker. But they can switch that. See how he sets the ball up. That's sometimes an indication. Setting it up normally. You see it straight up and down. See, now, if you, if you, you know, sometimes when you set it up like that, you try to hit the top of it yep. and make it or bounce. And get he, might, he might just pop it over that front line. Mm -hmm. Do a lot of things here. 38-21, Rutgers leading, 5.56 to go. Holmes it deep. Ron Dickerson going to ask his defense, they get it done, as Willis takes it at the one-yard line. Down he goes at the 21. Now, on the other hand, do you keep Willis in the ball game? Let him try to break his personal record. What does he have, 223 yards right now, his previous... I'm sorry, is, does he have 200? I'm it's looking at Burris' numbers. How many does uh, Willis have? Willis is over 200 yards. At 203, the Owls 80 yards, 216 off the clock. P.J. Cook, his second TD pass. Third TD pass of the afternoon by Burris. And Willis's biggest number again to this day, 221 yards. He got 308 all-purpose yards today. Big time. He answered the call, and he's still in the game. Bruce Presley out, groin injury two weeks ago against Boston College. Temple's defense needs to stand here, 5.50 to go. New quarterback, and Willis 
still a star as he gets up to the 27, the quarterback Robert Higgins. Higgins, who came in and threw a couple of passes against Miami and helped lead Rutgers to the win over Army. Did that when uh, Ray Lucas went down with the shoulder injury. Higgins, a 6'3", 215, a junior out of Brooklyn, New York. Ray Lucas getting a rest. You know, you almost think you take Willis out so you don't, he doesn't get hurt. Because they, they're going for a bowl bid. You want them refreshed for next week. Sure enough, Rutgers at 4-3-1, and 1-2-1 one, one, and one in the conference. Higgins, draw to Willis. Breaks free and a saving tackle. Corey Green. A lot of room to run for Willis if Green doesn't make the tackle. Seems kind of obvious now. They're just going to give it to Willis, see if he can get his own record here. Just turn, hand it right side. Got the block by Bridges. Battaglia. It's a late hit here. Willis at 214, so he needs seven more yards. I'm sure they're aware of that, then they want to get him out because if he gets hurt, two games to go, you're shooting for a bowl. Hmm. Balls at the Rutgers 33. Lock at 440 and counting. Hunt in motion. Willis got the close to the seven yards. He needs seven to get to his personal high, career high of 221 set against Army last year. You know, I wonder what he's going to tell Presley after the game. <laughs> Take your time getting back, Bruce. I'm doing fine. Presley's a big loss. At 538 yards, three touchdowns, even threw a TD pass. He did that against Syracuse. We just saw him man the warm up jacket. Willis, Paul, and the first down. Battaglia, a good block. Now First down across the 45 out. to about the 46, and that ought to do it because I think that gives him the numbers. And sure enough, here comes number 20, Damon Hamlin. 230 yards, a rush, rushing record for Rutgers. He breaks J.J. Jennings. Check that J.J. Jennings rushing record here at Rutgers is 230. Set back in 1973. And Willis with a personal best. Just takes it off the left side, gets outside, and turns upfield. He's had some afternoon. Now he comes out, Hamlin comes in for him, number 20. 225, the yardage for Terrell Willis. Too much time taken by Robert Higgins in the offense. Dead ball foul, delay of game. On the offense, remains first down. Matt Gorman's going to come in, I believe, at center right now. He wears number 51. Here comes John Bleich, the center. Bleich playing in his last game as a senior. Rutgers only 15 yards in penalties this afternoon. First and 15 from the 40. Big yardage. Damon Hamlin, he started for two-time unbeaten state champions down at Wild Lake High School, Columbia, Maryland, with the Fort Union Academy, too, before coming here to Rutgers. Now, you, you think Graber is smiling yet? No. Clock reads triple zeros, and then he smiles. <laughs> Moving inside of 2.30. Willis back in again. Picks up a couple. Corey Green. Quick pop on him. Gets him up to 229 yards. Boy, Ezra Johnson, a fullback, and you see him number 48. What a crunchy block he threw. Look how big he is. Coming out of the game right now is Ken Damon. Playing in his final uh, game as a senior. Number 79 for Rutgers. Also, Chris Kennedy. Dead ball. Personal foul. On the defense, 15-yard penalty, first and 10. Another personal foul, third one of the day against Temple. 
Michael Theokas in at left tackle. He replaced Ken Damon. Theokas, a junior, son of Charlie Theokas, former athletic director at Temple University. 38-21, coming up on two minutes to go. Willis still in the game. He's got 229 yards. They obviously know he needs a yard to break the record. He gets the call. So much for the record. Picked up a couple. So the weakest point of the Temple Ball Club, a defense that was last in the conference against the run and 85th in the country, 218 Make that 219 yards. Gives up big numbers, 231 yards to Terrell Willis, which is a single game record, rushing record. I don't know if that Jennings guy was any good. I remember it, J.J. Jennings played for Frank Burns and was pretty good. I don't know if he punted as well as you did. You get fullback. Lotta Woofing going on now. Number 15 involved, Jonathan Gibbs. Heard you mention this last week on the Jets uh, Jets broadcast. Have a little class, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, at the end of a ball game when it's over, just hey, take your helmets off, head on home. I know you're disappointed with the loss. Here comes Willis. I'm gonna get him out, get Gibbs out of the ball game. Wholesale substitutions now. Final 30 seconds. Want to thank Temple SID. Sports Information Director, Associate Athletic Director Al Schreier, and his Associate SID Jerry Emick as Heyman, Hamlin rather, gets down close to the 25. Rutgers Sports Information Director Pete Kowalski and his staff. Our stat man Eric Poseman and spotter Terry Yorkshire. And that will do it. Our Rutgers Scarlet Knights make it four straight over the Temple Owls. Rutgers runs its record to 5-3-1, and 2-2-1 two, two and one in the conference. And Temple still looking for its first win of the Big East Conference. The Owls drop to 2-7 and seven overall. And 0-5 oh and in the Big East Conference for 1994. 31 to 28, the final, with Rutgers winning here at Rutgers Stadium in the final home game for the Scarlet Knights. Our post-game show follows from Rutgers Stadium after these words from our local station. Welcome everybody to our Big East Football Conference Game of the Week post-game show. The final score from Rutgers Stadium, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights win at 38-21 over the Temple Owls for a crowd of 26,468. And joining us from the field right now is the Rutgers coach, Doug Graber. Doug, Dave Sims, and Dave Jennings with you. And uh, after the bye week, you got to be feeling pretty easy after this uh, result. Got to feel a lot better getting this win today. Uh, exactly. You know, the, the bye weeks are always tough, and you're always nervous how your team's going to come out and play. And uh, Temple came out and played very, very well, I thought, in the first half. They had a lot of adversity uh, this week, and uh, Temple, I thought, played very, very well. And uh, we gathered ourselves at halftime, and I certainly played better in the second half. Doug, you told us yesterday that you challenged Terrell Willis to pick it up and carry the load today. He responded in a very positive way. I guess so. He broke <laughs> the all-time uh, single-game rushing record, and I just, uh, you know, Terrell uh, had to step up and be a man, and he really was. I think that uh, this is clearly the best uh, that he's run the football all year. He, he, was, he ran tough. He lowered his shoulders. He, he was tremendous today. One thing you mentioned there that's very interesting too, Doug, you said he ran tough, he ran tough between the tackles, and that was something you guys were concerned about during the course of this year. Uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he's a heck of a player, and uh, you know, we got two great backs here, and we're very blessed to have both of them, and with one down, obviously uh, this was the key to have Terrell come out and play the way he did. Co Coach, at the end of the first half, they were lining up to take a three-point lead. You blocked the field goal, not you, but Washington blocked it, Trivet took it back. How big was that turnaround? Huge, huge. I mean, that was certainly the key uh, play in the game. And, uh, 
uh, you know, it was a, a great uh, break for us. We executed it well, but it was still a good break for us, and that was uh, tough for Temple to go in at half. With and have, you know, when they really, if for all rights, they should have gone in with the lead at halftime. Covered 80 yards on that play, Doug, and you could definitely see some of the wind go out of the uh, the Temple Ball Club after that play. Lucas threw the ball well today for you, too. He really did, and he, he, the Wednesday and Thursday, I think he had his best practices that he's had since his uh, shoulder injury against Miami, and we really need a healthy Raymond Lucas, uh, you know, as we go into these, uh, this uh, next game against Virginia Tech. All right, Doug, thanks for joining us. Congratulations on the victory this afternoon. Thanks a lot, guys. Doug Graber, winning coach this afternoon, his ball club now 5-3-1 and one overall, and Big East, they're 2-2-1, two, two and 2-1 one, and two and one at home. And an easy choice for our Molson Ice player of the game, it's Terrell Willis. 337 all-purpose yards, a couple of scores. He rushed for 232 yards, nine yards catching, and 96 yards in kickoff returns. And I think he's telling Bruce Presley, you don't have to get back so fast. I can carry the load, but he answered it. Rutgers wins it 38-21. We'll continue our post-game show from Rutgers Stadium. We'll do that. More post-game activity and highlights after these words from our local stations. Sun is smiling on a happy day here at Rutgers as the Scarlet Knights win at 38-21. And joining us right now in the postgame show is the Rutgers Scarlet Knight quarterback Ray Lucas. We had a big day, 12 for 18, 106 yards and two touchdowns. And Ray, congratulations on the win, especially coming back after the week off and the shoulder problems. Thank you very much. How does the shoulder feel? Coach Graber told us yesterday, giving you that week off after the BC game allowed you to get back to 100%. Are you 100% right now? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, it gets sore after, you know, before I throw and then after, but during it, I'm fine. I feel great. You know, I have good zip on the ball. I think I had a little too much today a couple of times, but uh, I think we could, I feel great. You had a good zip indeed because Harper and Funderburk, you had a couple of big plays there that were gimmies and they let it get into their chest and they owe you one on that one. Oh yeah, I know they'll pay me back next week when it really counts. Let me ask you a question. What does it do for you when you have a back like Willis who can rush for that many yards today? I mean, Terrell Willis is a great big time back. I mean, Bruce was down and he knew the pressure was on him and he answered. I mean, you can't ask for anything more than that. He broke another record. I mean, I think he's going to shatter everything we have here. So it's just that much easier when he's running that well for me to throw the ball. And I just, you know, I had all congratulations to Terrell on the offensive line played fantastic. Offensive line did do a great job. And uh, Ray Lucas, I guess, the Rutgers quarterback. And Ray, you guys are now 5 3 and 1, 2 2 and 1 in the conference. I know Doug Graber was trying to get us to shy away from the bowl bid question, but it's, is it something that's on your mind thinking about the postseason? Well, not now. I mean, we have two games left and they're must wins. And, you know, we got to take care of business first before we could even think about traveling anywhere. Uh, the last year, last time we were 7 4, we thought about the bowl game against, and we played Cincinnati. And we just we went to the toilet, and we were home. So I just want to win these games, and then after that, then we'll talk about the ball. All right, Ray, congratulations. So we thank you for joining us and uh, continued success throughout the season. Thank you. Rutgers now 3-0-1 in, in its last four games, and they have played some pretty good football coming off the off week. And Rutgers now is 9-13-1, and 9-13-1 and all time in Big East play while the Temple Owls continue to struggle. They're 0-23. Our player of the game joins us right now, and Terrell Willis, who had a career, a Rutgers rushing record, single game record of 232 yards. Terrell, Dave Sims, and Dave Jennings upstairs, congratulations, and you accepted the challenge from your coaching staff quite well today. Thank you very much. Terrell, how did you feel out there? Did you feel right away that it was going to be your afternoon? Did it take a while to get going? I mean, with Bruce out, you know, all week, we were going in knowing that, you know, I had to carry the bulk of the team, but I didn't realize I was going to do this well. Terrell, you ran with authority. I know the outside part is your game, but you ran pretty well between the tackles, too. Oh, yeah, I was hearing it all during the season, you know, because I was going down easy and people were saying, you know, you got to run harder. I just decided, you know, to put my head down and just run straight. How about your fullback, Wes Bridges? He certainly opened up some holes for you. No question. Wes Bridges and the whole offensive line was just giving me the uh, running time, you know, the room to run, and I was just hitting the holes. You're buying the post-game meals tonight. They did do a heck of a job for you, no question about it, right? Yeah, no question. Did you did you ask tell Bruce Presley that, hey, you're, you're fine. Tell him to take a couple more weeks off. You like running the ball like this? <laughs> no, he was on the sideline, you know, <laughs> talking to me, and he's going to be ready for Virginia Tech. 
we just got to, you know, regroup, just go down to Virginia Tech and play football. Terrell, tell us about this. Virginia Tech, the last two meetings, two years ago here, you guys beat them 50-49, the last play. And then down there, it was in the 40s again. Should we look for another high-scoring uh, matchup with you and Virginia Tech? No question. As long as Rutgers has been playing Virginia Tech, it's always been, you know, a close, hard, fought-out battle because they don't quit and we don't quit. I'm expecting it to be the same when we go down there next week. Did Temple surprise you the way they did so well in the first half, especially running the football? I know you're on the sideline watching. No, we, you know, as we was watching films on. We knew they had a good uh, offense. You know, they were scoring. They scored a lot of points on Penn State. They scored a lot of points on Syracuse. So we knew they had pulling the offense. So you know, it wasn't a shock at all. Gerald, thanks for joining us, and uh, best of luck in your last two games, Virginia Tech and Pittsburgh. Great day today. Thanks a lot. Terrell Willis, our most nice player of the game, and what a contest he had. 232 yards rushing from scrimmage. That's a Rutgers single game record, beating the old mark of J.G. Jennings, who was a pretty good player here at Rutgers back in 1979. Final numbers. Temple had some success on the ground, but overall, at the, the turning point turned out to be that 80-yard return of the block field goal. Everything was even until that block field goal. It was a 10-point turnaround in the first half, because if you look at all these numbers, they're relatively even. The total yards, very close. Penalties. Temple did get hurt by some penalties, especially down in the goal line. Time of possession, not two, you know, four minutes difference, but it was, uh, you know, I think, Temple for at least a half has to be pleased, but that second half got away from them. Indeed, and uh, the emotion, the final 30 seconds when Tribbett went 80 yards with a blocked field goal really proved to be a crusher. They could have been up 17-14. Instead, they were down 21-14 at half. Henry Burris, what a day. Three touchdown passes, no interceptions. He went 20 for 32, 223 yards, and he firmly established himself as one of the best in the conference. We'll continue with our post-game activity from Rutgers Stadium. The final Rutgers wins it 38-21. We'll do that after these words from our local stations.